He had like the water on it. Cause I see my whole <sighs> Just keep the lot dry. Light dry. Oh shoot. <laughs> <laughs> This is my protection. This is my protection gear. It keeps the locks dry when you're in the shower. Yeah. Yeah. Let me lie for this mustache. I'm going in just like this. Okay. Okay. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Grata pelos vegetais da nossa terra, grata pela floresta, pelo sol, uh, grata por todo o vosso esforço todos os dias. Uh, Amo-vos muito. Grata, minha família. Grato. 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 Melting and melting and melting, but it was just very, very big chunk, so it's getting less. Nice. And then, as soon as everything is liquid, we're well, gonna put the sweetener in there. All right, looks to be coming out pretty good. Mm -hmm. All right, great work. <laughs> yeah. I'm uh, making raw apple pie with uh, the base is figs. Brazil nuts, homemade tahini, and then this part is uh, a jam that was made earlier with raisins, coconut and figs, mixed with cinnamon, apples and some tahini, and then we're going to top it with uh, some soaked Brazil nuts.
Everybody got so much. Watch it, watch it. Everywhere you walk, it's all. Look at the snail trail. <laughs> 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 provided to them, all the gifts that each of these people have in this room that I observe every day through those photos and the videos, I can see the love that they have for one another. And I'm just so grateful to have this experience from afar. And please just watch over. 
for all of them and bless them all so that they can continue to have healthy, happy lives and just prosper, thrive. Amen. Give thanks. Thank you. Give thanks. Okay, I'm gonna go now, Olivia, because I have to go to work and I'm crying a lot. Okay, okay, everyone, <laughs> everyone say, everyone will say goodbye. Uh, see goodbye. you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Not lovely to meet you. See you. Bye bye. Okay, Olivia, I'll talk to you soon. Okay, love you. Okay, love you. Bye. John. Can't lie to this guy. Nice. <laughs> so happy. Great footage. No, 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 I'm just going to show you from here, yeah? And then look. You just leave it in one place and let, let the action do the work. You don't have to follow it, you don't have to do nothing. Look at all, it all just unfold. Hey, and the little dog just came. And look at that beautiful scene. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> End of a circle. Mm, a circle of life. <laughs> She's there to me. What are your thoughts? Yeah, we, we, we did a, we put in a lot of work in this team. A lot of highs, a lot of lows, a lot of joy, a lot of stress, mm. and a lot of pain. Working very hard and, and diligently, ardently. So it's cool to come back full circle. And we starting fresh, continue on with the Vipassana the meditations. Gonna be moving into another space, growing in the knowing. 
just pushing you still don't worry. Mm. This tent and the space that we've been cultivating has really allowed for like the deepest self-exploration, self-journey inward that I've ever experienced. Um, and now I'm seeing my mom tomorrow, returning to a source in the physical realm, really like returning to my origins, returning to who I really truly am inside, letting go of all the rest, just being me and just expressing that and loving that as it is. Your intentions, intentions and awareness is and wisdom are like the most powerful currency. So even like watching this video and seeing what we're doing, just having your intentions with us to just continue grow, like, you know, co-creating this new earth with us. Like, even though you aren't here with us in the physical yet, like we're still all connected, you know, we're one network and soon we will be together. Uh, when we're growing and, and someday you'll be with us in the physical. And it's so magical what we've been doing. And I'm really excited to be creating more magic, you know, with all, all of you guys out there that are um, supporting us from afar, wherever you are. So I also want to give thanks, you know, I really, and I'm sure all of us really appreciate all of your support and we'll keep holding for it. Mm -hmm. keep, keep moving. Yeah, man, for sure. Well, I would say that this practice in particular, the, the Vipassana that we've been practicing has really contributed to so much personal freedom and how that really correlates to freedom for humanity and so i really see like what we're doing here as tangible work to free free this new earth that we're creating and you know your contribution to that is means the world it really does because it creates freedom creates a, an opportunity for others to find freedom and to find true happiness and true peace um and that's that's wealth. That love and that happiness from within is is true wealth. So I give thanks. My name is Aviva Pinheiro. You can find me on Instagram, Viva underscore Pinheiro. I'm a musician. I create music, sing, instrumentals. I'm getting a cello soon. So picking that up again. Cooking, cleaning, writing. Laughing, lots of laughter. Hey, it's your boy Luce. <laughs> <laughs> Luce Pinheiro. Yeah, I do all sorts. Uh, I love to clean. I'm like the 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 kingdom. Yeah, top maid, housekeeper. Also like to cook. I love to write, as you guys know, and sing, make music. That's my center. Uh, also transmute in different ways, uh, emotions and different energies. Um, yeah, I just started using a chainsaw, so that's been fun. Yeah, I've just been growing and just learning as I go. What you doing? Uh, we're gonna sow some seeds. Come on, man. Overwhelmed by seeds. 
Okay. Um, yeah, let's close the door. I like it nice and toasty in here. I do. So I've got all these seeds here, as you can see. These are peppers. We've got some date there. Some key limes, some oranges. If anyone knows what kind of a seed pod this is. And these are the seeds. Answers on a postcard to Pineal Foundation. Pineal Foundation. Nichols. Mm -hmm. Went for a dog walk. Yeah. It's a did a sweet food. Dog walk. Nice yeah. food. Nice. Did a sweet food. And um, what else have I done? Not much. No. Eating some oranges. Me too. Nice. I've got a lot of jobs to do. But as I say, film wasn't built in a day. <laughs> and I like to uh, keep myself busy all over the place. Give thanks, give thanks. Yeah, it's all good. Relaxing for me to do this. I don't have much experience with it, but uh, it's not my favorite lane, let's say it like this. Did you have a garden in Holland? No, not really. I had a house plant. A house plant? Yes. What kind of plant was it? Aloe vera. Aloe vera? Yes. Okay. It's a beautiful plant. Mm -hmm. So, 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 right, that's two rows. Caravan Media Center. So all of our podcasts, all of our videos, all of our photos, recording studio, all in this thing here. Very exciting. Foundation. Nice. So he works around oh, here. Nice. So you can you give him, you have to give him a donation for Yes. <laughs> I got so it. Is it? Is it? Uh, what was he uh, doing? Florestal exploration. Yeah, now he's filming again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Good thanks. When will we yeah, learn? I know you <laughs> Come on, come on. Oh, so, I was waiting for. <laughs> and where are you? So we just got back from the walk. How, how are you feeling? I'm feeling really energized. Walked barefoot today. Oh, I was releasing some of the energy within. Funko's father here for the uh, first yes, time. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, how was your first walk with us today? It was very nice, yes. thank you. Yes, beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> nice as always. Mm. Luna's room is finished, so we're going to see how it turned out. Mm, here we go. So, we painted the bed. Fairy lights in there, screen walls, in the window there's 
the little outer. Gonna make a close up there. Beautiful new dream catcher. And we painted the closet in the same color as the wall. And we created a plant hanger. And now we're going to ask Luna what she thinks of the result. Luna, yes. what do you think of your new room? I absolutely love it. Thank you so, so much for putting uh, it down for me. It looks amazing. Yeah, you look really happy. I'm <laughs> over the moon. <laughs> okay, give thanks. Give thanks. Give bye thanks bye. So much. bye. Delicious raw balls. These ones, blueberry, lemon zest, some other ingredients which we'll put in the recipe book. And this is the chocolate ball, which has dates, raw cacao, maca, and some other ingredients in the recipe book. So, all right, all right, hear this. So, our lovely Viva has rolled them so pristinely, as we can see. And we asked, so Viva, how many did you eat? And she said, one or two. So we're just doing a visual representation of what that looks like. <laughs> so it's one or two. But I'd say if you ate one, you'd remember, right? But it might have been two. Which then turned into maybe two or three. <laughs> just in case you don't remember. Two or three in 20 minutes. Which then turned into a definite three or four. Did not turn into a started off as a what started off as a one or two turned into three or four. <laughs> so making it a five. Just to be safe. Just in case you didn't remember if you ate one or not. Good thanks. Good thanks. Good thanks to the raw boys. I'm going to take them now. Is this a video? <laughs> so what's for dinner today? It's pizza. And hey. like a cashew sauce. Ooh. Uh, and the features made kale chips and their own cashew cheese. And Louche made a cheesecake. So today is just... Sweet. It's a good day. Wow, it is a good day. We're abundant. We really are. Good thanks. Why, why are you not coming now? Because uh, supposedly there's no cake. <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not walking for three hours and there's not to be cake at the end. Oh, okay. What is there at the end? What's the picnic now? Juice. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. I like that too because it's competing, but I'm not like. I like to compete, but in a healthy way, not like I want to be the winner. I just like to, the, the thrill. The, the challenge. Well, I prefer to be the winner. <laughs> I just prefer the challenge. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna win now. I'm gonna have the other one. It's all about taking care. Are we bringing it? Nah. Well, you want to pull back first. <laughs> <laughs> He's not doing it. Well, come on in. Straight, straight. Who's carrying the cake? <laughs> <laughs> I'm carrying kale. Round and then it's got stuff on the bottom. Yeah. Sure. All the kale already out. Can I? Who are you? And there's one tray, there's one bowl.
Have you made that? Yeah. That when we get there. Oh man. Thank you. Like here, it's actually north. It's south. You've got to go down the Atlantic Channel to go to the true North Pole. And this is where Iberia and Eden and all that are. Mm. And then he says, this. What we call our sun and moon in our microdome, just like the clock in Prague, is doing this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're saying the Earth is moving, but it's not the Earth that's moving. It's our solar system that's moving, and us humans follow it. But it's moving ever so slowly, or sometimes it might happen in. These are what ev events are. Yeah. And the part that's behind gets frozen in time, and, and then it part. defrosts the new part. Yeah, exactly. And this yeah. explains things like the pyramids that they were built. So there might be new pyramids, the part that's going to defrost. There's yet to be revealed. They'll be revealed and then we'll be like, oh, who, who built these? But it's probably us during the last cycle, like 26,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. And he says, this is just how time is going. And then he explains, this is probably why, like, you're getting all these mega cities being built, like China, these ghost towns. Yeah. What, if they're, what if they're preparing for, to keep them frozen? And then when it comes right around in 26,000 years, yeah. it's already built for us. Culture, here comes the rapture. Feminine sculpture, goddess looking at you. Harmonious sculpture, here comes the rapture. Feminine sculpture, goddess looking at you. First nation teacher, teacher, spiritual preacher. If a chief feels really, or your uncle's easy. Oh, hi. I love her part.
coming your way. Let us see what this show. show. We are ferocious. Please don't find it. We are conscious. Welcome to the past. We're beyond us. We're beyond us. Kingdom ship. Pine your kingship. Hip hop flagship. We are the starship. We are the starship. Harmonious culture, here comes the rapture. Feminine gotcha, God's looking at you. Harmonious culture, here comes the rapture. Feminine gotcha, God is looking at you. First nation teacher, spiritual preacher, and the chief goes freely. I'm a pioneer family of Pinheiro, activating DNA, becoming superheroes is official. Real life, nothing superficial. Vision is so clear now, 2020 crystal. Footpath, mountains in the distance. No more mental prisons. Sovereignty is your decision. So join the family and help us with the mission. Only time in your word, you see your to earth. When you wake up, you realize you were chosen from birth. The time is now, and it's waiting to flow. In the new earth system and the manifesto. Make a decision. Yeah, yeah we're a family is already written. written. So can make a decision of, of where you wish to be in the new earth dimension. Hey. Of where you wish to be in the new earth dimension. Yep, yep. Yep. Smashed it. Yep. Do 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 it because they say so. No. Do it because you want to. Yes. If you feel forced, just us. If it's in line, take rest. You say you need him. You say you need her. You say you need this. You say you need that. You won't get nothing you need until you know yourself. And that's a fact. Why? At a time like this, many are sitting on the fence, shouting and raising their fists, and always taking offense. Triggered by everything and sorry for nothing. Always projecting, spiritually bluffing. Ancient faces of the new earth are set the tone. For our music, our future no longer unknown. Whole team coming through. He said, she said, what about you? Red, blue, that royal purple altitude, that purple shining bright when we bring our earth anew. We, the magicians, gifted with intuition, not trusting our decisions that set with the vision. No division, Pinero living. Can you feel the vibes of this Pinero New York tribe? Did <laughs> it? I um I asked Chad the other day. Yeah. So this wise man do meditation for all their lives.
so free. is so happy <laughs> it was more like this yes you can yes My name is Ja and uh, I am can't say one sec. So um, what's 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 my official position? Sorry. Uh, so what have we got? We've got the pine coin. What we've got? We've got pine coin. I'm gonna have to take notes. Yeah, we're gonna have to take notes. Look it's at a this. big question, a big answer really. This is just epic. Look behind you, bro. I'm happy you're friendly. Yes. Like two bears, bro. I can answer it now, it's got to be answered now with the goats. There. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm Ja, and uh, when it comes to our economic plan, uh, we have a currency called the Pine Coin, which is in development, and it's a way that we'll trade between our internal communities, as well as a way to exchange with other currencies within the world, whether fiat or digital. And uh, we're really in a place where we're becoming self-sustainable and regenerative. So uh, we're finding our ways to put values to the things that we're producing, and find, finding a way where the value of uh, the commodities we have are based on uh, the value of what a person would need rather than one commodity being worth more than another. So we're just in this process now, uh, but we will be trading with the outside world and uh, using this token as a way to um, show the value of what we're doing as a project. So if you're someone who's interested in that and wish to contribute or wish to help out, then please do. Give thanks. Oh, you say number 33, that's yeah, all the Number 33. Yeah. <laughs> Is it on a sh like a round? No, I think we should share some favorites. Oh, right. You don't like that one. Do I start? It feels like a fucking electric fist. This one's
Yeah. Book Club. How's Book Club? Book Club is yeah. enlightening. Maybe I'll write another album yeah, because yeah. of it. Brilliant. <laughs> how's Book Club? Yeah, yeah. Great. Greatness. Yeah. What are you saying? No, it's all right. How was Book Club? It was very good. Beautiful. See you tomorrow. What was Book Club saying? Yes. Do not film this, Viva! <laughs> what? This is so embarrassing! Oh, so embarrassing! Good thing. How was the kitchens today? Good. Yes? Yes. What did you cook it? I cut some dal, mm. some wild rice, Ooh. Lucia made some bread, Give thanks. and then some salad. Nice. So look at this. going on here greetings family so we're currently making raw balls so uh, part of the culture at pineal is uh, we have multiple recipes of raw balls which we're going to be sharing over the next uh, few weeks which will be a recipe book and uh, the basis behind it is fruits nuts and uh, different flavorings all completely natural and organic and uh, it's really one of the main sustenance on the land so it's exciting to be able to share that with others Excellent. How do you feel about raw balls? They're amazing. They're great. What kind of sensations do they give you? What kind of sensations? Yeah. Ooh, what a question. Uh... <laughs> I, I, I get butterflies when I see them. When I hear those raw balls, I get, I get butterflies in my stomach. My head starts to go light. And I think about all my favourite childhood memories of when I was happy. Wow. I don't really, but... <laughs> Almost though. Raw balls is at the highest tier of foods right now, you know. Nothing really outpeats it. Okay. Outpeats? Nothing outpeats. Nothing outpeats it. Outpeats it. Outpeats there's, no, okay. it. there's no more peats that can. There's no peats higher than. There's no peats higher than. <laughs> no peats raw balls. Raw balls. <laughs> what do you feel about raw balls? They make me very excited. Really? Very happy. Okay. Nice. What do you think about raw balls? They gave me a lot of uh, joy sensations. Okay. Really nice. delicious. Beautiful, beautiful. Give thanks all. Looking forward to the recipe book. Give thanks.
I'm uh, taping the the tree, the outlines. Um, then I'm gonna spray it like I did down here. Um, when that's done, I'm going to make leaves, probably in pineal purple. Mhm. Mm mm -hmm. Beautiful. Maybe in pineal and gold. Not sure yet. Just uh, figuring it out along the way. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Okay, thanks. Hi, today we're preparing our Ardo garden for planting. Already a few mystics started tilling the soil around with the broadwalk talk. Um, Katja is following him, removing the weeds out of soil. After that, we'll bring some fresh topsoil and we'll be planting some Romanesca, spring onion, some lettuces in this bit over here. Okay. Yeah, we've got a lot of you preparing the uh, soil as well. He's turning the soil with the pot fork. He's preparing in the beds for watermelons, squashes, pumpkins, and beans. All right. We are now at Politano. Politano is a bit more established than Aldo. We've got already growing some tomatoes, bok choy, romanesca, peppers, kales, um, lettuces. Um, yeah, I'm looking good. Moving backwards, like what is that? <laughs> trying to dig. They go, they go in the ground. You've seen them before? Once or twice. Oh, that is horrific. It is. Right. Wisdom. It's just like yeah. Observe yourself. It's yeah. on the app. Are you like the big ones? Um, <laughs> keep breathing. So the little ones, they, <laughs> they happy. Yeah. seem to be able to get them. Yeah. Any, any wisdoms for the people's they names? What I'm realizing from this walk is that it's not about the destination, it's the journey. Give oh, thanks. Boy is always ready. Give thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and what have you learned about yourself? Mm. <laughs> to not be so hard on myself. To listen to my body. Yeah, I follow instructions. Ooh. <laughs> Don't be specific. Not all instructions. Yeah. No, not all yes, of them. Yes, the yes, ones yes. that make sense. Yes, yes. Yes. Who are you? What's up, bro? I'm Rimo Pinero. Any, any recent insights, bro? Golden, golden elixir. Ooh! And making it. 
changing the game, I think, bro. Wow. Can you give, can you give, uh, be more specific for the people that don't know what golden elixir is? My urine, my shavambu. I've been collecting jars, like a lot of us here, yeah? Glass jars. Glass jars. Yes, yes. I lid it on off. Sometimes put a bit of a fabric on out. I've got, I've got different experimentations going on there. It's about a month old. I've got a reusable face wipe pad. And I clean my face with it. I uh, wash my hair. I even use it as a shaving ointment. And then I drink it, and it seems to be working wonders, to be honest. It buzzes me out, it's really, really great. Get past the um, initial conditioning of what it is and what we've been told it is, and, it, and it's, it turns out to be a lovely medicine. So, you right there? <laughs> uh, <laughs> a little, little, uh, little jig for us. We'll give some more uh, clarity the on, the, on the jig. <laughs> yeah. We're walking barefoot, and sometimes when you're not looking, yeah. uh, you, you, so tread, right. you tread on some hard stones. Astro! Hey! Any wisdom for oh, the people? Oh, you got a tooth? Yeah, it's just a plastic thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not having it. Any wisdom for the people? No. No, none. You can just keep your eyes wisdom. open. Or a joke. Keep your eyes open. Oh. Keep your eyes open, yes, that's good. I like that one. Very simple. Um, what did they say? Yeah, it's all coming out now. I reckon yeah. by the 30th on the eclipse, then uh, the whole world's gonna be different. Really. Mm. So, let's see, revelations. Let's see. What have you What have you learned? What's the most recent thing you've learned about yourself? About myself? Yes. I need to be able to hear my alarm clock ring in the morning. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's great. Good. That happened, Good. It will come, it will come. I don't That means you sleep well. Always. Yes. This is definitely your best hoodie so far. What did you say? I said it looks more cultured than funky. What, the one he's got on that? Yes. Okay. Well, it's plain, it's nice. It goes more with the uh, kaftan. I know Viva's been uh, working out already what she's going to say. On my what? What am I going to say? Oh, yes. How did you know? He can read my mind. Yes. It's true. That's right. So, uh, what, what, uh... I have a joke. Oh, you have a joke? For the people, yes. Oh, okay. Go on then. A really great uh, dad joke that I heard this rising. <laughs> What's a word that starts with E and ends with E, but only has one letter in it? Oh. And only has one letter in it. No. What about you, Mystic? Do you know? Mm. Say it again, Viva. What's a word that starts with E and ends with E and only has one letter in it? Wow. Yes. That ends with E yes. and only have one letter in it. I'm going to need some time to think about it. <laughs> Are we ready? Yes. Envelope. What was it? Envelope. 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 Yes. yes, one letter. <laughs> yes. How does it have it has, one letter? It has I don't get it. It's it an envelope. What do you put in an envelope, bro? Letters. Right. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I get it, I get it. It's I too early, it. it's too early, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a bit slow at everything, so, yeah. It does take time to uh, to register. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Makes so, lots of sense. It's a good one, it's a good one. Yes, it's so good. Uh, thank you, Viva. Good, thanks.
Yeah, yeah, it's it's you got some uh, insight or wisdom for the peoples? Uh, I just like to say, live the life you want to. Mean what you say, say what you mean. <laughs> and uh, that's it really. Just be clear what you want in life. Stand for what you want. And don't move. <laughs> Strong determination. Strong determination. Beautiful. So Vitmo, Lush. What's going on with the musicians? Wow. Yes, sir. We, what are we doing, guys? Well, me and Ritmo just started talking, conjuring up some some music things. So yeah. look out for some more music on the horizon. I, I also believe we're all going, doing our, got our own little inspirations going on, haven't we? And then we'll come back yeah. and mix them all up together. Yep. Feels like that's a good vibe going on there. And we just Beaver had an album smashing come out. some. Yeah. We just had an album come out, huh? Yeah. We did on May 11th. April 11th, and then we have another one coming out on May 1st. Is that right, Ritmo? See, right. what's May that one first. called? May the first. Black Country Real Yard. Yeah. Video coming out with that as well. Agua's put together, which is awesomeness. Agua smashing it. Yeah. The guy for Agua. I think we're waiting for some sun rays. Hey. Rays. Hey. Hey. Rays. Hey. <laughs> and then gonna get some more, uh, get some uplifting oh, tunes on the go, go oh. again. With you two on those soulful vocals, I feel. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Spiray, yeah. what tune are you coming up with? Yeah, you're coming up with the tune, yeah? I don't know yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> It'll be nice for me to be on the uh, tunes with everyone. Yes. yes. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> what tune are you going to be on? I'm going to be on one tune. Which tune? So the tune that I'm going to be on is... Uh, uh, well, we haven't got a name for the song yet, but the lyrics go something like... Oh, Can you come and sing the... Sing the oh 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 get oh oh sing the oh 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 get oh 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 oh, oh, oh. that was so special. Um, what's the tune? What's the hit of the summer? <laughs> Don't project on me, cause you're not seeing it my way. Don't oh, this one. Don't try to blame me, cause you're not seeing it my way. I mean, <laughs> I mean what I say, I mean what I say, said I mean what I say. Yes. Yes, Mystic. Yes, brother. So, uh, any, any wisdom for the peoples? Any insights? Recent? Insights. Well, for now, what I have is practicing eating less to stay uh, young stay stay vibrant stay alert uh, so just know that we have we, we have a second brain which is our gut and the more we uh, the more food we put in there the uh, the more difficult it is to to kind of uh, you know 
to stay focused really mm. yeah so keeping our gut empty for a long uh, an extended period it really uh helps with uh, finding yourself you know what i mean mm. yeah yeah it's, it's um a lot of us don't realize that our um, our gut is not just a, a gut it's a brain mm -hmm. you know so a lot of processing takes place in the gut that's why we always say we have a gut feeling Ooh. <laughs> you know Ooh. i have a gut feeling of about something oh yes didn't say that i have a brain feeling but i have a gut, a feeling, gut so, feeling right yes. yeah that makes so much sense so by keeping the gut keeping the uh, the stomach empty occasionally going through intermittent fasting uh, it's something that we we want to do often to be able to you know allow the the, the, the second brain if not the first brain the first brain i'm thinking yeah, yeah. To, uh, to process information you know to process things hmm. by keeping it full all the time you you know it's it's oh, you overworking it it's being overworked so yeah so that's basically the little knowledge i would like to share Can you fit through the window, Viva? No. Really? Yeah. Tap the door. Are you joking? Like, is there something at the bottom? I'm, I'm here, Viva. You, what do you think? I'm right here. Tap it three times. Four times. That's real optimism. Like, oh, what do you think? For four days. Four days. Four days. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe three. But yeah. But yeah. We got blueberry. We have moringa. We got pear. Pear. Pop, pulp, pear pulp, chocolate, and lemon and ginger. Yes. Yeah. And we got savory balls in the, the fridge. Savory balls in the fridge made by Mystic. Made by Mystic. I can't speak for him, but I can always say it's a greatness based off who ate some. Who could give me? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know the cameraman, social. but yes. <laughs> the cameraman speaks. Wow. Yes. Good yeah. thanks, everyone. Good thanks, everyone. So we've got savory and sweet now. Savory and sweet. Mm -hmm. This really is going to be the, the future, really. This is going to be our, our food. This is the now. This is the now. <laughs> this is the now. Hey. For really? For really? Present. Present. What's your favorite one? Mm, it's, it's blueberry or fudge. Or moringa. I really like moringa. Mm, okay. Yeah. What's your favorite? I prefer chocolate. Right. Hey. What's your favorite? Yeah, like chocolate and ginger lemon. Mm. Mm. What's your favorite? I'm going to have to go with the... Chocolate fudge, blueberry, and moringa. Double chocolate. <laughs> Double chocolate. Double chocolate. Good, thanks, everyone. Good thanks. Yeah, yeah ma'am. 
These are sensational. I've just come out with the blueberry moringa. Mm, I think that there's a chocolate one in there. Wow, this is how we're doing. What's going on in here? Making us shoes? A shower. A what? A shower. Hey! An outdoor one? Yes. Good thanks. What do you think? It's looking great, mate. Hey. <laughs> if it's tall enough for you, then it, it's, it's tall good. enough for me. Yes. Good. Yeah, that'll work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey! We need to clean this out for sure. Oh, do you reckon? <laughs> <laughs> I love. <laughs> Give thanks, guys. Cheers. Thanks. Love, love, thanks. love. Viking came and joined us uh, for a 28 day visit. So, um, yeah, he's getting involved, settling in nicely. There's our gardens. Another revamp of the pool is going on as well. Poly tunnel. Yeah. Yes, looking very nice in there. Oh, God. Rest, rest is very important, everyone. Very, very important. Look who it is, it's Crystal. She's back. She came back from Colombia. She's been away for five months. Felt like five years. How you doing? Oh. You can see. What are you doing? Do I do I have to put this down to help? Sorry? Do I need to put this down to help you? Maybe. Yes? Okay, cool. Yes. Right. Your yes. Wow. And it is. Oh I do Yes. Wow. <laughs> so um yes, exciting. Very exciting. Very happy. Did you aim for a boy or a girl? I was aiming really like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Twins. 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 Yeah. Twins. Great. Amazing. Twins. That, that, <laughs> so you know the day of conception then? Yes. We know the every day. Exactly. Yeah. Due date is January the 5th based on that. Ooh, Capricorn. Which would be a Capricorn. Yeah. So, but we'll see. So day by day we go. Yes. So if everyone can uh, slowly alleviate Katia from any... Mm. Um, Hard heavy works, lifting. heavy lifting, stress, <laughs> mm. give as many good vibes as possible. Mm. The meditation is obviously a big help. The food. But mm. yeah, really like uh, just nurturing this energy, nurturing Katia as much as possible. Mm. And uh, the new Pinero that's on the way. Mm. So much mm. nurture and good Free vibes. Baby. Yeah, stress free babies. Free babies. Amazing. <laughs> So, and if anyone wants to learn the technique, um, <laughs> uh, Pip Squad, the next Pip Squad is on Monday. <laughs> Congratulations. just allow nature to do its thing this is what happens Yeah, it's just been left to grow and you're just graced with all this beauty <sighs> so good
that we added to our living. Can we just uh, hold it up there? <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Nala. Happy birthday to you. Luna, can you come and tell tell them what's what's in the cake as well? Oh. <laughs> it's a raw cake. This looks oh. beautiful. Hey, good thanks. <laughs> so it's a raw cake. Um, the base is uh, Brazil nuts and dates. The filling is cashews, um, coconut milk, date syrup, crushed um, peanuts, and covered with a uh, dark chocolate. Wow. wow. Uh, and the flowers. Really. And the flowers. Amazing. Yay. Yay. You're doing too nice. <laughs> 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 yeah, the Jason's and shit. Wow. Beautiful. Yes. Beautiful. Enjoy. Yes, so much thanks. Yeah. Enjoy. We're going to enjoy after the, after the, the hangout. Yeah, we're, we're almost done this. Nice. I, I, With I, full attention and full awareness. So, <laughs> it's the perfect lead on to the warbles. Oh, for, yes. uh, <laughs> <laughs> Wow. So, yeah, one of the transitions. Do you want a piece? I can eat mine. Yes. What do you think of the cake? Yeah. It's amazing. Incredible. Really good. Amazing. You did good, Luna. You did good. good this thanks. was, I think, the best one on the land so far. How was that first um, mouthful? How was that? <laughs> Is this for them as well? Oh, what is it? Chaga. Yeah, liquid melanin. Thanks. Wow, that's sugar. Wow. So, Chef. Yes, baby. You're finished. <laughs> I am done. Oh, well, ahead of time. Ahead of time. What's for dinner today? So, today we have a lovely. Peas and uh, chard, green chard uh, roti. So it's, it's like um, lentils and um, split pea and um, lightly steamed chard wrapped, wrapped in the, uh, the peas, uh, vegetables, uh, cucumber, and um, lettuce. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Magical and delightful dressing. So the dressing consists of um, coconuts, mangoes. Uh, what is in there? Uh, turmeric. 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 Uh, a, a splash of oil. vinegar. Yeah. A, splash, a splash of oil and uh, and greens. Beautiful, beautiful. So it's gonna be magical. Oh man. Wow. Stinging nettles. Stinging nettles. And uh, spinach, spinach as well. Beautiful, man. Beautiful. So it's highly charged, believe me, it is. <laughs> and how's it working with your daughter in the kitchen, your father in the kitchen? Uh, well, she's been eating, she's, she's been helping me eat. <laughs> <laughs> Not too much working, but eating. Nice, yes. nice, yeah. nice. And are you, are you considered the sous chef? Yes. <laughs> okay, because I see there's some things for you to do over here. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes, yes. <laughs> definitely the sous chef. Beautiful, yeah, beautiful. Yeah, we did get into me that I have, I need to do no more. The, oh, look at that. Yeah, so I'm done. Yeah. Give thanks, give thanks. I'm going to head to the barn because I have some wood to cut for the, uh, for the fence. Yes. I'm, I'm building. Nice. So I'm going to come for a meeting. Beautiful, give thanks. Give thanks, Give thanks, give thanks. Give thanks. Give thanks. We're all doing some work on the land right now, bubbling into some tunage. Sun is out. What's going on over here?
Lovely. How's it going today? It's good. Yes? Okay. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Uh, I'm sewing some um, smaller pieces here. Beautiful. And then I'm stacking the pieces. Excellent. How's your first few days? It's good. Yes? Yeah. Beautiful. I mean, I'm slowly landing, slowly accumulating. Yep. Beyond words, it's really, it's like coming home. There's so much love here, there's so much, yeah, it's really beyond words. I don't know how to explain it. It's really something that you have to experience for yourself. Yeah. But yeah, I've never been in a place like this, so. Love. Give thanks. Uncle Funko. Yes. Yes, brother. Hello. Hey. How is the connoisseur of Pideo day? Amazing. Yes? Beautiful, beautiful. beautiful. Incredible. Oh, look at this. Oh, great system. How are you feeling, brother? What's going on? So, uh, yeah, I feel great. It's a very pivotal time in the kingdom of Pineal. We're cleaning up all our processes from the ground up. Uh, now we're in the wood department. We have really big, huge wood piles everywhere. It was messy, so now Clean up the area, we're getting it sorted. Uh, and it's looking great. We got the chainsaws here, Funkles. He's very amazing at organizing, so he's cutting them into nice stacks and things like that. And we're just clearing the land up to, uh, so that we can receive more energy, give more energy, and it feels great. It's really great vibe here. I've definitely had some dips, some up and some up and downs. I've had some really amazing highs and some lows. Uh, at this moment, I'm, I'm flying. I'm doing really well in Vipassana meditation. I've been eating raw for the past maybe a little over a week or so. Just really, it feels really amazing to just, I'm like in a research phase of myself, what my body likes, what my, my mind, and uh, it's great. The weather is great. You know, honeybees and butterflies. <laughs> honeybees and butterflies. How I'm feeling is in the sky today. How's it going, Astro? Oh, it's <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is the shower, huh? Yeah, get the door on that and then I can strengthen it. Nice. Support it. Thanks. You'll step all the way around inside. Clean it up, obviously. Yes, yes, yes. It'll be good, man. Yes. Yeah. And what other projects are going on that you're working on? Um, what I'm working on? Yeah, I know you're doing lots of stuff. <laughs> so, like, you learn me, here we go. Oh, there's a tiling out there. I want to build some stairs up to where we're jumping that little canyon. Oh yeah. The solar panel, the solar shed wants um, finishing, cladding, and building some cupboards. The washing machines people over there. Yeah, bits and bobs, you know. Nice, nice, nice. How are you feeling? Good. Yeah. Excellent. Beautiful, man. Beautiful. Enjoy. Give thanks, bro. Yeah. So every every Monday we have a family action circle where um, for about four or five hours everyone gets onto the land and gets on with uh, what needs to be done uh, right now we're really on the clearing up the land in time for the summer uh, I wonder if there's anyone around here no Let's have a look in the poly tunnel. Wow, it's looking amazing. Sun. The energy is shifting cosmic rays hit our eyes 
Landscapes full of color as the flowers arise The birds sing a new song, a choir of sound Barefoot walks through nature, helps me to ground A cold and wet winter has just passed us by A beautiful clear vision of the blue plasma sky Green of fear is my favorite time of the year Full of life and color, helping my mind to clear True beginning of the calendar, the spring equinox Forget April fools or the changing of clocks Dream of era is my favorite time of the year So celebrate the new beginning as we do here In the kingdom of pie we are already setting A new paradigm the old one will forget Primavera pineal, onde os corações crescem e o amor brilha. The season is changing, new life has begun. A welcome return of a more powerful sun. The energy is shifting, cosmic rays hit our eyes. Landscapes full of color as the flowers arise. The birds sing a new song, a choir of sound. Barefoot walks through nature, helps me to ground. A cold and wet winter has just passed us by A beautiful clear vision of the blue plasma sky Green of fear is my favorite time of the year Full of life and color helping my mind to clear True beginning of the calendar, the spring equinox Forget April fools or the changing of clocks Green of fear is my favorite time of the year So celebrate the new beginning as we do here In the kingdom up to pip squat, exercise, sound healing. Then I went out to the field just to get some kindlings in nature. And I just came back from Verde to get the, the wood things to make meditation cushions. Mm, beautiful. Yes. Nice. Hey, it was your birthday yesterday. It was. How was that? Amazing. Good surprises. Nice. Yes. Nice. Good, good, good. Very delicious cake. <laughs> oh yes, that was great. Yes. Um, extreme swim in the lagoon. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was surprised with a warm bath with uh, rose leaves. How's it feeling to be a, another year younger? Good. <laughs> <laughs> I glitched. <laughs> yeah, you did. Where are you going now? What are you doing? I'm heading to my tent for 20 minutes and then we have a family meeting. Smashing it, right? Yeah, it's a 
everything's numbered now. Oh. You can keep track of what is what in what bed. Oh, that's great. Yeah, there's 40, 50 beds. How many beds? I think 44 or so, busting out. Nice. Out there. Yeah, it's a nice, nice little tree there that we were planting not long ago. Strawberries on the back wall. Lots of chilies. Yay! Got all them flowers. Wow. All them flowers. No pepper there, see? Some out there, uh, sorry. Potatoes. I think these are black potatoes or purple potatoes. Yes. Pretty sure they are. Proper yeah. potatoes. Growing. Oh, yes. growing. So many spring onions as well. I love it, man. Strawberries. I think we've been picking them already. There's a couple there that are ready. Oh. oh, that's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. Those are very nice. Oh. Melons are cute cucumber. Oh, another one. Look at that. These are flowering already. Oh, this is a beautiful bed. Isn't it just? That was covered with all. Yeah. I don't know where the rest are. They must be out there. Anyway. Yeah, man, beautiful. Give thanks, Astro. Give thanks. Give thanks. Give thanks to Luna and Foray. And um, an honourable shout out to the Common Ground crew who came through last year and really regenerated this space, uh, which really paved the way for us to be able to manage it um, a lot better than it was the previous year. So yeah, give thanks to Damon, Taylor, Kylie, Melina, Cass, Really giving so much thanks to them. He just came and smashed it, really. He really did. So give thanks. Common ground. Look them up. If you need your uh, gardens regenerated, uh, give them a shout. Common ground. Yeah, common ground, common ground, common ground. Give thanks. Much love. By the plants, not the meat As we battle the beast I'm a king and I roll with elite We're the shepherd for the sheep The asleep and the mentally weak Rolls up in the times that are peak Winning the war to bring peace We're elite I'm alive, I am free I am spreading all the love that I can be Always sticking to the plan There's no plan B Inside seeing all the good that I can see I am peace All in, no maybes May we build a better life for our babies We save trees Eat fruits and save seeds Meanwhile building up a nation to succeed with my G's Kings and queens, show me where you at If you're feeling these vibes, come on, let's chat Kings and queens, show me where you at If you're feeling these vibes, come on, let's chat Kings and queens, show me where you at If you're feeling these vibes, come on, let's chat 
Aww. Remember back when our mom was in life In a carnal world we never going back Just seen another pathway I'm gonna make um, I think it's gonna be this way, you know And uh, drawing the leaves on the tree, it is uh, stencil. Mm -hmm. And I need to make some smaller ones to fit in the smaller places. Okay. So, yeah. What do you think? I think it's going to be beautiful. Great. Okay, thanks. Hey. I'm uh, painting the leaves and uh, the ones who are still white are going to be either gold or a lighter color of purple. I'm not sure yet. So, uh, yeah. All right. What a great way to start a video, huh? That was great. Well done, couldn't I? Do you want to start again? Yeah? Okay, cool. Let's go. Hi, I'm Kundai and today I made falafel wraps. So the wraps are spinach from the garden. The sauce is a pesto. It's, it's just basil from the garden with sunflower seeds. And this is the falafel. It's chickpeas, chickpea flour, mixed with the spices of paprika and turmeric. Beautiful, give thanks. And how long have you been cooking for now? 
together or today? Just thin all together. <laughs> Maybe one or two years. And what's the best dish you've cooked? I have no idea. Oh, okay. <laughs> Do you prefer cooking like sweet stuff or savoury stuff? Both. Nice, okay. Beautiful. You're going pick squad. You're going pick squad. Oh, I am. Where are you going? Why are you going that way? Join it. Um, I might observe it. for a bit and then That's I might join them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're going to need a couple mats then. Okay. So we're going to make our meditation cushions from this tree that is on the land. We'll show you the finished product on another day or we may even show you the whole process. Um, what do you guys mean when you said in the past to leave certain loved ones behind? Oof, okay, that's um, I don't, it's not a literal, it's not a literal approach or a literal sweeping statement. It's not about not caring about the people that we love. It's really about the process of learning to find ourselves and not being caught in the trap of, of attachment. Um, as we all know, we were all born alone and we will all transcend this realm on our own. And right now we're going through a process of where the waters are washing away our sins, so to speak. And uh, this initiation is very much a individual journey. So when we say leaving loved ones behind, it's, uh, it's really reflecting, taking a look at your life and just saying, are there people in your life that are holding you back from being the best, best version of yourself? And if there are people in your life that are holding you back from being the best version of yourself, as much as you love them, you, if you're ready, you have to make a decision sometimes to walk that narrow path. And that narrow path is obviously not for everyone but here at Kingdom of Pioneer we're certainly trying to attract those who are ready for that for that for that path. Do you care about those left in the matrix? Do we care about those left in the matrix? If I didn't care about those left in the matrix I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now. I would be focusing on my own inner journey and my own transcendence I would have no need to create or to co-create a kingdom with other people. I'd have no need to create an alternative new earth. Um, the reason why we're doing exactly what we're doing is because of how much we care and we love everyone in this realm. So this is really a journey of self-sacrifice in a lot of ways. We're not doing this because it's fun, so to speak. We're enjoying it, but the ultimate reasoning for it is not because it's just fun. It's a lot of hard work, it's a lot of sacrifice, there's a lot of energy and time and emotion and all kinds of things that go into what we're doing. But we're doing it because we believe that if no one does this for the rest of the world, then who is? And we're going to try. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're doing this for everybody in the Matrix, present and future. This is how you activate your Buddha. Classify to decalcify. Don't assume the programs you consume. The perfume of progress is in full bloom. This is the remix, the story told in prefix. Pi is the suffix, the embers of the phoenix. DMT the helix, altering the matrix. DNA to fix psychedelics in the mix. Psychedelics in the mix. The Kingdom of Pineal is an autonomous, sovereign nation of peoples whom have chosen to live together in trust under the cultural laws and spiritual tenets of our shared common
principles and beliefs. The Pinheiro Nation clan is the Kingdom of Pineal's first family. The Pinheiros of Pineal are the pioneering royal family that founded and continues to co-create the new earth nation kingdom that is Pioneer. We are currently an autonomous community nation. Our current status is a nation of peoples in embassy occupying a plot of sovereign trust land in the country of Portugal. Yes, but to give context to that answer, we must first understand what the word cult actually means. To most people, when they hear the word cult, they immediately envision a picture in their minds of something dark and nefarious. Mind-controlled people following an evil overlord guru who is leading them to a mass hysteric death. This picture was planted into your mind by the cult of magicians of Hollywood. And there is good reason for this. Ironically, most people don't know that they themselves are part of a cult, the global cult of Western culture. If you buy clothes, food and merchandise from the same establishments as everyone else you know, you are in a cult. If you have a TV, radio, smartphone, computer and you watch, listen or share the same information as everyone else you know, you are in a cult. Sports teams harness cult followings. Musicians have cult followings. Netflix has a cult following. YouTube, Facebook and Instagram are all cult platforms. The word cult is actually derived from the word culture. Culture is simply habitual or repetitive habits and behaviors of a collective of people. A culture becomes a cult when the culture of a collective is consciously observed and adhered to. So in this sense, pineal is a cult as we are consciously creating and observing our own cultural system of living. Furthermore, what separates the kingdom of Pineal from the global cult is that we challenge the status quo of the current global cult by initiating our own unique individual cult status quo. We have chosen to break free from the collective Babylonian matrix cult and instead create our own unique individual cult that is in alignment with our core beliefs and ideals. From our dress code, how and what we eat, our cultural habits, ideals and principles, all of these are cult practices we have created and chosen to follow. Whilst we are a kingdom, we do not adopt the autocratic system of societal rulership. As a sovereign nation that practices sovereign principles of living, all women, men, children and animals living in trust of the kingdom of Pineal are free to govern and rule themselves individually and or collectively as long as they are doing so within the boundaries of Pineal's cultural beliefs and spiritual tenets. In order for our cultural beliefs and spiritual tenets to be upheld, it is imperative that we have structure an organization which helps to maintain social cohesion for the greater good of all. After all, there can be no happiness without order, no order without authority, no authority without unity, and culture is unity. The Kingdom of Pineal's culture is built on the foundation of three core principles of law, 12 universal laws, 11 natural laws and 10 pineal tenets. These pineal laws and tenets are further enhanced by pineal's cultural laws, which consist of all our societal habits, customs and behaviors. These include what we eat, how we dress, how we speak, where and how we live, our ways of expression, our customs, rituals and spiritual practices. In essence, the Kingdom of Pineal's culture is based on the celebration and enhancement of all organic life on this earth in the spirit of all that is natural and godly. Every citizen of the Kingdom of Pineal is considered an heir, queen or king. Every citizen is an equal trustee 
an ambassador of everything the kingdom represents. This means every citizen holds an equal measure of responsibility and ownership for the kingdom at large. However, like any successfully functioning society or nation, there are different societal departments that require varying degrees of skill or knowledge. We call these trust pillars of our society. The Kingdom of Pineal has eight main trust pillars of organization. These are Earthcare Trust, which includes the welfare of animals and nature. Home Care Trust. This includes all matters of pineal housing and infrastructure. Civil Service Trust. This department oversees all Kingdom of Pineal's administration affairs. Social Zen Trust. This involves all community, health and well-being matters. Future Care Trust. Future Care Trust includes all Kingdom of Pineal education, information and technology departments. Culture Trust. Culture Trust oversees Pineal's customs, laws and various art departments. Trade Trust. This is the trade, finance and commercial arm of the Kingdom of Pineal. And finally, Ambassadors Trust. This include all branches of councillors, elders and community representatives of the Kingdom of Pineal. Each of these pillars has its own structure of visionaries, planners, organisers, managers and ambassadors. These are what we call pillar authorities or authors of our society. Pillar authors do not rule or govern the nation, but rather they serve as instruments to help propel the collective will of the people, which in turn maintains cultural order, unity and ultimately happiness. Yes, like any other cultured society, it is imperative that the homogeny of our society remains culturally intact in order for us to continue to healthily grow and ultimately thrive. For this reason, we have a strict and stringent process of initiation into our culture. It is important that all who wish to become a part of our society are fundamentally in alignment with our core principles and ethos. As a nation that prides itself on the values of trust, respect and honour, all our nation's citizens must pledge all their trust in the greater good of all that the Kingdom of Pineal represents. The greater good of the we must always supersede all other principles. This type of mindset is counterintuitive to the present mindset most other cultures and societies follow today. Most of us have been cultured into religious, political, educational and social systems that promote individualism over collectivism. Most of humanity measures success through self-gain, which promotes competition and ultimately leads to moral decay. The Kingdom of Pineal challenges this programmed system of scarcity and self-survival. As a progressive society, we strive towards a system of thriving through collective abundance, just like our ancestors used to do. Such a mindset requires a certain level of detachment, both mentally and physically. This level of detachment can only be achieved through a process of spiritual self-initiation. One must first lose the world before they can find themselves. The Kingdom of Pineal's process of initiation into our culture is centred on the premise of identifying and integrating those who have or are at the very least going through this process of complete detachment from the Babylonian me program to the future we program. All for one and one for all. No, it does not mean you have to give everything up. It means you must be ready to detach and or share whatever surplus possessions you have acquired with the community or society of people you are choosing 
to live in trust with. This level of detachment requires a huge amount of trust as such a decision is often a permanent or lifelong commitment. This is why our initiation process is so stringent. Part of the pineal initiation involves a self-evaluation process mentally, emotionally and physically. By the time one is ready to join the kingdom of pineal, they should know what they are willing to detach from, what they need to keep for themselves in order to live comfortably and what they are able to integrate and share with the collective society or community they are joining. Absolutely. In fact, we would argue that it is impossible that you have nothing valuable to contribute. This is because the Kingdom of Pineal does not measure wealth through material possession alone. We measure wealth on the spectrum of knowledge, skills, spiritual and physical commitment, willpower, as well as material contribution. Spiritual commitment to the tenets of Pineal is an absolute must. Willpower to mentally and emotionally detach from the Babylonian matrix system and integrate into the kingdom of pineal system is also a must. And as long as you can adequately and applicably contribute some kind of knowledge or skills that will benefit your community and the kingdom, you are wealthy beyond measure. Any material wealth that you may contribute to help the kingdom further develop is always welcomed and appreciated, but not an ultimate requirement. As a collective of people coming together to co-create a new culture, society and reality, it is important that all involved are in cohesion. Whilst we celebrate individualism and free thinking, it would be wise for us to also observe rational, common unity, ideals and principles. This common perspective of coexistence is what we call culture. And so, those who wish to become a member of the pineal culture must fully understand and resonate with our core principles, ideals, philosophies and practices. Having said that, we also embrace free thinking and new ideas that challenge our current perspectives in a healthy and constructive way. Well, the world is clearly undergoing a great shift or transition from one paradigm into another. Some might call this a great reset, others call it the great awakening, some say it's the apocalypse. As far as we are concerned here at Pineal, all of the above are valid. The world as we know it is changing and it's changing fast. These changes can be seen as positive or negative, depending on your ideals, beliefs and perspectives on reality. At the Kingdom of Pineal, we view these current changes as a positive outcome and a great opportunity for those who wish to break free from the paradigms that no longer serve them and start creating new paradigms that are in alignment with their ideals, beliefs and needs. The Kingdom of Pineal is one such organization doing exactly that. We are actively co-creating a new paradigm of reality for ourselves that best serves us both physically and spiritually, individually and as a collective. Well, I like many used to have the view that there are plots against humanity by hidden forces in high places which is the perspective held by many, many people, which is kind of true. However, as I worked my way up through my own self-initiations of awakening, 
my view began to change significantly. The further up the ladder of illumination I ascended, the more I came to understand that the purveyors of the dark tower and the keepers of the lighthouse, so to speak, are both in service to the natural and universal order of all that is. The yin and yang of light and dark. The checkerboard of superheroes and arch villains. The wheel of life forever turns without objective prejudice. To assume any different would be a denial of divine intelligence. As far as I'm concerned, divine intelligence, or what some might call source creator or God, encompasses the full spectrum of light and dark. It is the Alpha and Omega. One can only find heaven and God within once they have conquered the evil within themselves and also outside of themselves. It is my belief that people must be challenged to an extreme in order to grow spiritually and they must be those who serve as instruments for that to be carried out on earth. Each person and the whole world together must descend into the depths of the hell experience on earth in order to rise through the gates of their heaven. This is what is known as redemption through sin. It's nothing personal and to take it as such is to play the victim, lost in the drama of it all. Once one has conquered and mastered the dragon of evil that lives within, they begin to transmute the shadow villain of self, and thus the ashes of the phoenix of peace begins to rise. The most efficient way to rise this phoenix of peace to the outer world is to find peace within your own inner world. This balance can be found by no longer participating in the conflict, and it's from there that we rise. This means speaking and acting from our centre, and not being caught on either side, but embracing the whole scheme as a reflection of self. By individually accepting the collective responsibility, you become the hero of your story, and the plot no longer becomes a mystery. You become Thor, the author and director of the script you choose to play. Here, and only here, can you finally meet God and set ourselves free. We have already succeeded. By virtue of daring to dream, and actively initiating our dreams into a living reality, we have set the wheels of time in motion, the butterfly effect, so to speak. By casting our dream reality out into the world, our spells, signs and symbols are forever etched into the fabric of time. And so, it is only a matter of time itself before the dream that is the kingdom of Pineal fully materializes into the collective reality. The first and most important action we have and are taking is actively detaching from the trappings of the world that no longer serves us. We are culturing new processes and habits that enable self-reliance, sustainability and regeneration. This process of transition requires a great deal of commitment and resilience, which comes with an initial sacrifice of discomfort and disturbance mentally, emotionally and physically. This transitional discomfort is what we call healing. Such healing is practiced through many different forms and mediums like shadow work, meditation, fasting, music, yoga, dancing and various other martial arts that encourage self-reflection. Perhaps the biggest challenge has been the integration 
of the healing process I have just spoken about within an intimate collective group of people. Starting a new company, organization or community always seems romantic and idealistic in theory, but the reality of actively living such enterprises is often daunting and difficult to say the least. This is amplified when you consider that we have started a new community, society and nation family of people from the ground up. Furthermore, we are doing this in the midst of all the social, economic and political chaos currently unfolding. The complexity of this mission cannot be understated. Detaching, grounding, healing, realigning, co-creating and finding common unity within an intimate collective of diverse people is not for the faint-hearted. It requires extreme and consistent dedication, commitment, patience, sacrifice from everyone involved. As a result of such intimate correspondence, everyone within the community becomes a mirror that forces you to self-reflect and face your shadow selves. This is the hero's journey and one of the most difficult feats every person must eventually face one way or another. The more consistently you face and overcome your shadow selves, the closer you get to finding and knowing the true nature of your inner self. Pineal community has and still continues to be a great mirror and teacher for those ready to accelerate their growth. Well, it's simple. Our long-term goals are to fully establish resilient, self-sustainable and regenerative living and cultural practices, applicable spiritually and physically. Pineal's short-term goals are to establish a fully recognized and homogenized sovereign nation-state of autonomous peoples of the earth. My personal biggest fear is not living up to my greatest potential. When my time to move on finally embraces me, I want to face my transition with no regrets. I want to be able to look myself in the eyes and confidently say, I lived my best life to the best of my ability. I shed, lived, cried and loved with everything I was and everything I had. I want to look back and see that I lived my life fully committed to what I believed in without fear of failure. Samsara's birth was a monumental occasion of celebration, not just for us as parents, but for the whole pineal community. Samsara's birth really marked the beginning of a new era as he was born 100% committed. Samsara's birth really marked the beginning of a new era as he was born 100% committed. This is hard. Samsara's birth really marked the beginning of a new era as he was born 100% completely naturally and was fully <sighs> Samsara's birth really marked the beginning of a new era as he was born 100% completely natural and was officially registered as a sovereign kingdom of pineal citizen the first true sovereign being of Pineal. He entered this world completely free and sovereign in every way. He had a knowing, he had a knowing soul and a clear mission, albeit a short one. I have no doubts his entry and exit from this world was divinely ordained for reasons beyond my human understanding. Despite this knowing, Samsara's passing away was probably one of the most painful experiences of my current life. 
His passing on really made me question my faith and beliefs. I found myself doubting myself, doubting the divine, doubting everything I hold sacred and true. For the first few weeks after his passing, I found myself truly in the valley of the shadow of death. I was crippled with guilt, shame and self-pity beyond the forces of anything I have ever experienced. For a while, I thought I would never find myself again. But not long after his passing, whilst in a meditative sleep, I met him in the astral realms. Our celestial encounter reassured me that he was happy and he had completed exactly what he had come on earth to do. He also reassured me of the mission I was on earth to complete and not to lose faith. And so, here I am, continuing the journey and also looking forward to reuniting with the soul of Samsara again in whatever future form, time and space. You can find out more about us from our website www.kingdom-of-pineal.org We also have an active YouTube channel which is under the name Pineal Foundation. Our Instagram page is at Pineal Foundation and all our music can be found on Bandcamp and Spotify under Pinheiro Family Music. Thank you for choosing to spend your time and space with me. I trust that the information that I shared with you today was helpful and insightful in helping you better understand who and what Kingdom of Pineal is. From myself and the family here at the Kingdom of Pineal, we love and appreciate you all. Give thanks. Till next time. Goodbye for now. Let's build a nation for all generations Foundations of culture, instructions that structure Mass formation, let's make information Pineal's my vision, cohesion's the mission Communication is unification Representation of all generations No revolution, we need revelation No more division, corruption of reason L-O-V-E, the spell is in motion like the oceans, the potions in motion Abracadabra dispelling the telling This is my fortune rewriting the spelling spelling The lunar range. Yes, the lunar range. This is part of the lunar range. <laughs> this one is a, a spring summer collection. Variety is the model. Extremely happy about it. <laughs> this one is a new number. 
it's called uh, the purple trim. So it's uh, Luna's favorite fabric, the same as the shorts on Ferrillage. And then this is her new dress. This is the the Lunage. It's called the Lunage. The, the Lunage, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Spring summer collection. That's a nice one, John. Yeah, yeah. There's loads on there. Yeah. Why wait for that? The mystery inside of us lie deep inside. Now let it show, no holding back, just let it go It's time to shine, your time to grow It's what you see, your sovereignty The love inside is all you need Your time is now, for the whole world to know In the kingdom of pie, it's where you build your trust Some dolma. So this is, uh, yeah, alkaline dolma. This is um, grapevine. So the leaves from grapevines, and I stuffed it with fonio and uh, courgette or zucchini, and that was it. Yeah, inside is some plum vinegar to to give it some substance. But yeah, it's a take on a traditional Middle Eastern or Mediterranean dish. How do you feel about um, such greatness, bruv? I'm just so happy to be a channel for it. Yeah. I'm such a clear channel for the most high of all this greatness. <laughs> and it's uh, humbling and also fills me with lots of confidence to know that everything that I touch turns into something like this. Yes. yes. So to be fully present in, in these moments, not something I take for granted. Give thanks for all the greatness. Give thanks. What's it like to witness? It's real... Um, it reminds me how, of how great I am oh, to be well, around that's, that's exactly such, it. such that's greatness. Good, real, <laughs> real substance. <laughs> Give thanks. Give thanks. How, how is this greatness? Like, surreal. Incredible. Such good soul food. Exactly what I needed today. <laughs> so what, what, when you put it in, what's the last bit? So you, when you've got it like fully in, yeah, like this, yeah. You have to like pull it back to yeah. lift up the soil. Yeah. And then just shimmy it forward a little bit so it kind of breaks it up a little bit. This bit, yeah. We're gonna go do the vodka melons. Um, because he said he got to a certain part and then it was too gravelly. Right, okay. so I don't know. Right, we'll do what we can. Um, and I think it needs like leveling. And Ooh, we're just going to put soil on. Okay, that's right. Yeah. Okay, cool, thank you. Because we're going to mention it today as well. So. Yeah, we're going to get on it. Okay,
going to be creating this greatness. Great. <laughs> Give thanks. So uh, here at Pine Needle, I had to produce more raw bites, snacks and everything for the community to keep our liberty high, our vibrations high. Uh, here today we've made five different recipes of raw ball and raw donut. These ones comprise of Brazil nuts, coconut, dates, sometimes raisins and a few uh, extra spices which will be in the recipe book. Uh, this is the donut version of the last recipe. Uh, there's something about shapes that seem to just change the flavour and the uh, essence of food. So uh, yeah, today we found out that we can make donuts. So we did. So on a subconscious level, shapes make a difference in our mind. And also for futures, uh, they love it when things are in different shapes because it makes food more exciting. So as we're eating more healthy and um, really introducing more of like a um, our liberty, which most people would call diet, as we're introducing more liberty and uh, healthy foods, we're putting it in shapes and ways that they're going to enjoy. Pineal favorite. We love, love, love cacao in the raw balls. This one is with Brazil nuts, dates, maca, cinnamon, uh, cacao. Yeah, it's definitely a, f a favorite of the community. <laughs> So these ones contain some uh, wild blackberries that we found in the surrounding lands and on the land here as well. So we'd go out with the futures and uh, we'd go out in pairs and groups and uh, harvest these blackberries straight from the vines. So these ones are made uh, again with dates and coconut, blackberries and uh, some more spices which will be in the recipe book. <laughs> Wow, good. So these ones are some green donuts made with spirulina, made with uh, moringa, sesame seeds. Yeah, Whew. I'm very excited for these ones. <laughs> well, we have like uh, Brazil nuts, cinnamon, a little cacao, a little coconut, and just salt and some aqua. And what do we call this concoction? Aqua's in there. <laughs> Ag aqua! <laughs> we call this Valorious. Valorious? Mm. Wow, right. delicious. Okay. Polarity. So this is how I define polarity in the most simplest way. Is uh, the plus and the minus, or the masculine, the feminine. We got some Chinese cabbage. We got lettuces, uh, rockets, strawberries. We got some pepper, tomate, uh, flowers as well. Some pine, some pine trees, lavender. Uh, we're gonna plant some more lettuces. Um, and we have here this pumpkin, I believe. And yeah. And we're gonna carry on. Yeah, plant some more cool. lettuces down there. We have a like a bed of flowers down there by the caravan. Yeah, we're here. greatness in the kitchen prepared by uh, spirit divine and mystic myself and it's called pine chi wow lots of greatness in there really and uh, sour sweet and sour Oof. sauce 
to go with it. Yes, nice. Yes. yes. And so what was the inspiration? A couple of days ago, I decided what am I going to do? What am I going to prepare? So just yeah, start it up. As I know the, the family like 50% um, raw, 50% cook. So I integrated the, um, the, the, the raw and the, the cook together. So we have a mixture of fonio and uh, spelled pasta. Uh, a sprinkle of ginger, uh, carrots, avocados, uh, lettuce, yeah. Wow. And a little sprinkle of uh, co coconut as well. Yeah. Be clean, stay true, be free, right through, create, with flow, have strength, let go. Eat clean, stay true, be free, right through. Create with flow, have strength, let go. What's up, King? What are you up to you today? I'm just doing a little wood shaving for the uh, for the fencing. Yes. So what I'm basically doing is removing the back of this um, of this plank to uh, to prepare it for sanding mm. so i remove the back with a machete and uh, i plane it after to level it off and uh, i give it a little sand up to polish it up and uh, i install it later on on the fencing so yes that's basically what i'm doing beautiful for the time being Give time. meditation cushions mm. yes gonna be foam on top fabric on top needles pins on the side and, uh, that's it what do you think yeah. what's going on over here just notice some parts Oh, nice. Yes. Mm. What are you about to do? Rake. Do some rakings? Yes. Nice. Rake the trees. In a watermelon bowl, which is a bit naughty for me because I uh -huh. shouldn't mix melons, but pear, mango, ginger, watermelon. Tell the people why watermelon isn't good to mix with things. So melons uh, break down in about 20 minutes, so you should really eat them by themselves. And pears and mangoes are part of a sub-acidic fruit group, which you can mix. But it's best to eat fruits by themselves, really. Nice. Hmm. But so naughty. So naughty, man. So naughty. Earth is the rise of the free. Listen to the wise as we speak. As I come with a speech, most high by the side of the meek. Nourished by the plants, not the meat. As we battle the beast, I'm a king and I roll with a leap. We're the shepherd for the sheep. The asleep and the mentally weak rolls up in the time. So, Mystic, I've been asked to ask you, like, who do you think you are? Okay, okay, yes, 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 I Nothing agree. Has to say, you know? So what was for dinner today? Because this was uh, something mm. sensational. Uh, garlic bread. Well, I, I had an urge to make garlic bread because uh, my garlic uh, senses became activated due to uh, the, our recent uh, cuisine made by Gertrude. So really, I had to continue that. Uh, <laughs> That journey, so okay, nice. I transmuted the energy by making um, some more garlic bread, and uh, it was served with some lovely guacamole, split pea, split pea da, mm -hmm. and salad. Beautiful. Give thanks, Mister. Yeah, no really beautiful. Good thanks. So the uh, caravan project is uh, very near completion, but we're ready for recording. 
So Jay's going to lay down a verse. Uh, so we're going to get him in the vocal booth. We invoke the spirit of love. Don't reach if you're not for seer. Open arms if your fam or peer. It's a jump and shout when you get here. We revoke the spirit of fear. Kingdom of pineal, crystal clear. Black magic is cancelled. No bad spirits or beer. Shadow work done. Time for the next gear. I invoke the spirit That's of love. I revoke the spirit of fear. It's clear for the one four four that the return of the Christ is near. We invoke the spirit of love. Don't reach if you're not for seer. Open arms if your fam or peer. It's a jump and shout when you get here. We revoke the spirit of fear. Kingdom of pineal, crystal clear. Black magic is cancelled. No bad spirits or beer. Shadow work done. Time for the next gear. I invoke the spirit of love. I revoke the spirit of fear. It's clear for the one four four that the return of the Christ is near. Charles Gas. So gas, man. So the power to be here, bro. <laughs> In the mountains. And got no enemies, only enemies. Raise my energy, got my abilities. Pinheiro building a legacy, built a nation on freedom and liberty. Sounds now. It's getting comfortable. Oh, yeah, look at you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Neo. Neo, Neo. Thank you so much, Luna. You did an amazing job. Um, I'm so glad to be here. It's such a beautiful place, and I can't imagine, um, imagine any better birthday. So give thanks to everyone. Thanks. 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 Here's the reaction video. Mm. Mm. Wow. Whoa. Mm. Mm. Have a taste. Yes. Wow, it's so moist. It's the queen. Moist and queen. Cake queen. It's so moist. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. What are you saying, bruv? Amazing. What are you doing? Making a belt. Nice. What's it going for? What's it gonna be for? It's going to be to put around my waist. You're doing that really well as well. I really like it. I just Wow. Smash okay. it, bro. Who yes, taught you how to do this? Yes, Mandela. Beautiful. What's been the highlight of your week? As long as you get the biggest one, please. I'm so full after the dinner. I'm. Beautiful. Why? So, first, we we played with the, with the visitor who's come. And then we started cooking. We made KFC for the vegan way. It's Kingdom Fried Cogmelos. Which is mushrooms in Portuguese. Yeah, like I said, if you want back around. So we've had pizza today, we've had fried mushrooms and we've had cake. It's been amazing. Beautiful. Thank you so much for the uh, KFC.
Say that again, Joe. So, uh, there's a lot of people who do like diets. It's in the word diet, where they like clean out the system and then they go to processed foods and foods that they shouldn't be eating. And the thing with cleansing your system is that when it's cleansed and clean, you're eliminating bacteria. So if, if you do a colonic or a big fast and these kind of things, then your body is rebuilding from that point. So you need to rebuild with good bacteria, eating live foods greens and fruits, uh, lots of things that are fresh because it builds back the bacteria. And then you, then you can eat what you want almost after that. Yes. But if you do a big cleanse and then you start eating garbage, then you're rebuilding your body on garbage. You might mm. as well just carried on eating it. That is a peak foundation. It's peak. Non-foundation. Non-foundation. Yeah. Garbage. Great. Good thanks. Good thank. Have you looked into like a... Uh, <laughs> Azure in a clonic? Yeah. And enemas. Yeah. Yeah. Because apparently, I've um, done it. Yeah, no. Apparently, it stings. Apparently, it stings. But you can get out liver flukes. Yeah. Brings it all out because it's very alkaline. Yes. Mm. After two weeks, it's crystalline alkaline. Yeah. So, how has your two days been here? It's been amazing. Why? I love it. Um, well, the ambience is amazing. Everybody is so nice and. Because everyone's awake here, you don't have to explain everything down to every detail to make them uh, understand. Um, it's, it's very enlightening. I've learned a lot um, about love and, and uh, understanding and how to... How that it's okay to just... Let things be what they are. <laughs> so it's been a great experience and we definitely want to come back. Hey, oh, good luck. When are you coming back? I don't know yet. We have so many things to get settled. <laughs> but uh, good, but good, soon, good. I hope. Yes. I know I don't hope. I, soon. Maybe <laughs> it's going to be soon. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Right, it's Actually, been a... Agua told us yesterday, you're going to be back sooner than you think. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can't come here yeah. and then leave. No. Yeah. Nothing, nothing yeah. is the same. No, I'm not leaving. I'm leaving my heart here. Yeah. <laughs> and the puppy back as well, you said. Heart and puppy, you <laughs> said. <laughs> oh, you have to fight my wife. Yeah, no, <laughs> we don't fight.
What is that, mate? Wow. What's in this? <sighs> yes, greatness. What's in this? Chicken. Mm. I didn't yes. see. Mm. <laughs> 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 Dates, coconut, Brazil nuts, cinnamon, coconut milk, and a whole lot of other greatness. Mm. And what's it called? Ice cream sandwich. Ice cream sandwich. Ice cream sandwich. Ice cream sandwich. Ice cream. I love. Yeah, a little sprinkle of in there. Ice cream sandwich. Ice cream sandwich. I don't like this. <laughs> I really don't. Oh, it's so good. No. It's gonna be a bit of trauma rewatching that for me. Storage. Which off was? Which off? Yes, using the wrong saw. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> oh. What saw should you be using? You should be using one that's not for metal. All oh, right. And plastic. Okay. Yes. Sir. Good. Thanks. So uh, we've got a main wood bay, which is two hectares over that side. So uh, we're just building some. Temporary shelters for wood storage so people can get it from local areas so that there's like five or six people with one of these. Good thanks. Good thanks. Expresses herself through voice. Even when she gets insecure, she clicks her fingers. Yes. Yes. One's needing that energy. Yes, yes. Give thanks for your... Give thanks. What's going on right now? What are you doing? So we had um, someone leave the community. And we're just cleansing the space. You're finding energies. Um, there's been a lot of shifts. And... My voice is one way that I do that, and cleaning. So, yeah, putting that to work, and opening up some new space for some new energy. Give thanks. Thanks. Oh, dude. What's going on? Transmutation, men's circle, celebration, greatness. So what are you doing here for men's circle? Bringing some treats. Oh, you're bringing us stuff. Good thanks. Some good vibes. Oh, so happy. So happy. <laughs> thanks. Happy. Happy. You deserve it. Thanks. Good stuff. Thanks. So, what have we got going on here? Salad. Um, the burgers. Yeah. You have a very nice style.
You can actually walk into where it's stored. Yeah. It won't be that long. Okay. You have to just walk all the way into yeah. it. It's really important for us to be aware of what is happening and to always try not to be reactive because of the understanding. Because as human beings, we have really fallen asleep completely. We have lost complete connection with the divine. We have gone into a, a artificial uh, natural way of being if you like an artificial paradigm so people we talk about the AI that's going to take over now the AI took over a long time ago this is just a 2.0 version right if we go back far enough we were able to communicate with the trees they could tell us all the secrets all the knowledge just by touching a tree you could look at history it was like a library right and now we have computers to do it to do it for us yeah. We had communities where people lived together in common unity. Where people shared, where people healed, where people knew their lanes, where people had organization and structure that was in balance with nature. And they took that model and now we've got cities. People are disconnected. People have jobs. People have all kinds of things that are not in balance with nature or the natural order of things. But it's okay because the people who do know always balance it out with other things as well. These Illuminati people, if you like. So, some of this was coded and left through these people. Some of it was written by some of the light workers of that time. So there's always a dark order and a light order. So the dark order is the one that has been guiding humanity now, in the darkness. Been in the shadows guiding humanity. The light order um, went underground, if you like. They disappeared. But before they did, they left a lot of codes. They left a lot of spells that they said, those who are enlightened with eyes to see must go out and go spell these spells that are coded in these scripts or these scriptures. And these are what we call the holy scriptures, the Bible. Quran, the Avestas, all these books. These books are books that are encoded with magic, first of all. Number one, supernatural magic. They're encoded with our history. There's information in these books that is there to remind us of who we are, remind us of where we came from, and remind us of the cycles that keep replaying. So the next time this happens, we know what to do. So that's what the Gospels, the ghost spells, the scriptures, the holy scriptures are all about. So it's really for the initiated. So most people, again because we're in a sleep, Christians will take the Bible and they'll read it, but they don't have the eyes to see. They don't know what's coded in these books. They don't know how to decode the spells that are coded in them. It takes high priests and prophets that are endowed with a special eye an activated pineal to be able to decode what these scriptures are really saying for those of us who are the Gentiles and for others it's been passed down they are told through generations the Illuminati and all these other groups it's passed down lineage they're taught how to read these arcane books the right way so this is where we really are at now we're now at the beginning we're now at that stage where those balances and checks are starting to happen. We're now starting to rebalance those, those, uh, those scales, the Libra. We're awakening now. The light workers are beginning to awaken. But there's a lot of confusion because within that awakening, a lot of people are awakening, but it's kind of like waking up from a, a long, long sleep and you're really, you don't really, you can't differentiate between what's reality and what's not. There isn't clarity, things are unclear for a lot of people. So people are activating a lot of memories from the past, a lot of inner knowing, but there's no context to what they are awakening within themselves, or what they are seeing, or what they are feeling. There's no interpretation. 
So when you're living supernaturally, like we said, there's an order to everything. In this whole world, there are certain lineage of people who are born as prophets. Right? They are, they are from the star system of prophets, whatever that star system is. And these people are naturally born with a caste system of prophetic knowing. They're able to see into the future or they're able to see um, things beyond what they can see now. Pro is forward and see is to see, prophecy. Pro for seeing. There are people who are priests. And a priest is someone who is endowed with uh, being able to activate that supernatural being within themselves and within others. So if you look in the Bible, the priests were the ones who were allowed, were the only ones allowed to do rituals, to do sacrificing, to speak to God. Only as priests could do that. There are those who are healers, there are those who are teachers. So we know all this stuff. So what's really been missing right now as you're awakening is, as it says in the Bible, the promised land of God will not be given to the Israelites. And the Israelites are all those who are the light workers, right? The ones who are here to usher in the new earth. This will not happen until the priests, particularly, have come together and have restored the Torah, the commandments. This is what's in the Bible. So right now, all the tribes of Israel, the Church of God, it's known as the Church of God, is scattered all over the earth, in the wilderness, asleep. And the priests, first of all, must awaken to activate the codes, if you like. The prophets have already awoken. The prophets are all those people on the internet talking about what's happening spiritual conspiracy theorists lots of prophets out there lots of people who know what's going on lots of people who can see beyond the veil many prophets are waiting for the priests the priests are the ones with the keys it really turns out that as you began to fall asleep there were 12 tribes or 12 groups of people on earth who were given certain dispensation, if you like, supernatural dispensation. They were the last people to fall asleep, the last people to have the last ancient arcane knowledge. And these are what's known as the 12 tribes of Israel, the 12 different races of Israel. And these are from all over the world, different races, different creeds, different cultures, but all of them were given certain magical powers that they were meant to either code for the future or code for themselves to reactivate in the future for themselves. Write messages for the future selves. In a lot of ways, we are now time traveling. We are time travelers. This, what is happening today, is really a script that is playing out, that played out however many thousand years ago, the story of Exodus, Moses leading people out of Babylon, going into the wilderness, not taking the mark of the beast, trusting in God, in the divine, leaving, detaching from everything you know, going to build a new earth, the promised land, going to find the promised land, rediscovering the commandments that were given to Moses, 169 of them, not 10. The story goes like this, these priests, a lot of them assimilated into what was known as Babylon at the time, and they mixed with the Babylonian, with the Gentiles, so to speak, the rest of people, as everyone started to fall asleep. There was only a small number of them who kept that lineage alive, and this is what you call um, the lineage of David, which is really the high priests of all the different 12 tribes one tribe which is called the tribe of Levites the Levites who were not promised land by God they were not endowed with land everyone else was promised land you will have land you will inherit the earth except for one tribe the tribe of Levites you will be given the fire 
You have no land on earth. What you have is the fire of God. So the Levites were set apart from all the others in the 12 tribes. They were a different tribe. And what that really means is their powers, if you like, or their knowing, even though they would fall asleep, would always be alive in their spirit, no matter how many incarnations they have. They will always have a deep knowing. And when the time comes, they would be the first ones to light the fire that triggers the next exodus and the next journey, if you like, the next chapter. These are the ones who would have the fire, these Levites, the Babylonian Empire, Gilgamesh. He enslaved a lot of these Israelites, these Jews. And Jews just means those who were magicians, the Magi. They were enslaved by Pharaoh. And when they enslaved by Pharaoh, um, the last high priest said, we have one last chance to save ourselves, us Jews. We can actually take a different timeline. We can create a different timeline and we can live actually and not fall asleep. We don't have to fall asleep if we keep the commandments. So Moses was the high priest. He knew the codes. Him and his brother Aaron, they went into Babylon to face Pharaoh. And they said to him, you need to let our people go, our Jews, those who are still keeping the commandments. Those who are part of the 12 tribes, they need to come out of Babylon. Do not brand them. Do not give them the mark of the beast. They belong to God. They are supernatural beings and they need to remain supernatural. They cannot become inorganic. And we all know Pharaoh refused and said, no, I'll never let them go. They must be in bondage because he was afraid if he let them go and these magicians went out and came together and became supernatural, they might start a kingdom that would rival the Babylonian kingdom, Gilgamesh. So he didn't want this. He wanted to be the king of the world. Moses did his magical rituals, turning the water into wine, into blood, sorry, taking his staff when he faced Moses, saying a mantra and dropping the staff, turning into a snake. So he did magic, supernatural, something supernatural. And of course it scared Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said, you know what, this is all scary. Take your people and go. I don't want any more trouble. So lots of things happen, the locusts, all these things. Take him and get out of here. So Moses went into Babylon and he said, guys, if you want to, you are free. If you feel you're a Jew and you're of God and you're one of us, we need to get out of here now. We need to go. Detach from everything. Leave your homes, leave your riches, leave your wealth. We're instructed to go back into nature, into the supernatural, into the wilderness. And many of them said, I am a Jew. I know my lineage. I do have supernatural lineage in me. I'm from the, one of the 12 tribes. But where are we going? I can't go into the, into the wilderness. I've got my shop, I've got my house, I've got my family, I've got other people, my friends. I can't leave all of that. I'd rather stay in Babylon. Some of them stayed. Many of them left with Moses and went into the wilderness and off they went. When they went into the wilderness, they wandered for nearly 40 years. They went through this, 40 years of being in the wilderness. And the reason why they were 40 years in the wilderness is because a lot of them couldn't align with the original Torah. There was a lot of infighting. It took them 40 years to try and heal what we're going through now in Pineal. These cycles, people coming, healing, over and over, same thing over and over again. The last time this happened, it took us 40 years to resolve our issues. So this is what happened when they're in the wilderness. Lots of meetings, lots of meditation, lots of mystery schools, every day. And of course, many went back into Babylon because they were like, this is crazy. It's been 40 years now, it's been, been 10 years. We're still walking around in the bush. Meanwhile, Babylon, there's some amazing things happening out there. And we're out here in the bush. Some of us have torn clothes. Some of us are starving. Can't be living like this. Many of them went back to Babylon. Those who stayed after 40 years, they had reached a certain stage. God instructed Moses, supernatural, said to Moses, Moses, 
Go into Mount Sinai. I have a message for you. I have a solution. You've done enough work now. It's taken you 40 years, but you've done enough work. Moses, go on to Mount Sinai. Go do some meditation and some prayers and some rituals, and you will have the answers you need. So Moses went up to Mount Sinai. I think it was 40 days. He left his brother Aaron in charge with a tribe down in the wilderness. And when he went up there, he did some rituals, he spoke to God, and he was given 169 new commandments, new ways of living, which were really the old ways of living, the supernatural ways. The tenants of Eden, how to live. And what he was told was, what you've done is you've left Babylon, but you've come into the wilderness, and you're still doing a lot of the Babylonian things you were doing. You haven't actually detached. Hence all these troubles you're going through now. So you need to go back to the original Torah, the original ways. So Moses did his 40 days. He came back down, excited to share with the tribe, say, guys, I have the codes. I know how we can get our promised land. Yeah, there are things that we need to do. We need to change a few things within our community. And if we change this mindset and a few things, all the portals and doors will open for us to start a new timeline that is abundant and thriving. But when he got back down, what happened? Does anyone know the story? Exactly. They went back deep into Babylonian systems. So to give it context now, it's like one of us saying they're Moses. Let's say it's Mandela. Mandela is Moses. And she says, guys, the community, we're having issues here. I am going to go up to the Australia mountains. I'm going to get some answers. You guys keep doing what you're doing. We're doing well, but we're not doing enough. There's something not right. I'm going to go find the answers. Oh, she goes into the mountain. <coughs> she leaves Funkel in charge. She comes back down and we're eating meat in the community. We're eating meat. There's all kinds of sexual debauchery happening in the community, right? Sex everywhere, bad food, fighting, drinking. So Moses came back to this and he was really angry. What happened here, Aaron? And Aaron said, I couldn't control these people in your absence. The moment you left, people went nuts. They went rogue. And everything has deteriorated. And Moses lost it, broke the commandments, dropped them, and they cracked. And he basically said, because of these iniquities, what's now happened is, we are going to be cursed for 400 years. We're going to go into captivity, into slavery for 400 years. Why? Because we were the ones who were meant to create a new timeline that was meant to keep the balance in the world, so the world doesn't go into complete darkness. And we have failed. And because we have failed, it's going to be even more peak for us. We are the priests. We're supposed to be the moms and dads. So this is the story of the Jews who went into captivity for 400 years and have been. And as soon as that happened, Moses scattered them. You can all F off now. Off you go. I don't care anymore. We're done. We're not redeemable. I'll see you in 400 years. And as soon as that happened, Pharaoh heard about this. Pharaoh teamed up with the Romans, which was the next coming empire, and said, you need to go after these people now. I heard they are weak. Moses has lost control of his community. Go out, bring them into slavery. Go get them. They no longer have the superpowers that they were meant to have. So the Romans hired the Muslims, if you like, at the time. A lot of people who had converted to Islam, which was a sect of some of the uh, Magis of the lineage of Zoroastra that had gone a bit rogue. Not the Sufis, the Muslims. And he hired them, the Romans hired them, to go and hunt down all 
the Jews, the magicians, the magis, the chosen ones, the ones who, who, who had the ability to activate their superpowers. Many of them were brought back into Egypt and enslaved. Some of them um, ran away to other places to integrate with other communities and hide. A lot of them converted to either Islam or Christianity. So as long as you converted to Islam or Christianity, you were saved. They were told this pagan stuff of worshipping nature, of being supernatural, all this is devil stuff. You need to either pray to a god, which is either Allah, or which is the god of Christianity. But you can no longer worship nature. All that is evil. So many of them did this, except for one tribe, the tribe that would not inherit land, the Levites. These Levites said, we're not going to convert to anything. We're going to keep the Torah, keep the commandments, keep the ways, the original ways, no matter what. And we will die trying. You can hunt us down to the ends of the earth, it doesn't matter. We will keep going. And we will make sure we keep this fire burning because we were given the fire of God. So these Levites, this is where you get the word to levitate. Levitate, Levite. Higher, stay high. All of them, the whole tribe went to Africa, to a place, uh, to West Africa. And they got to West Africa, they asked to integrate with the local Bantu people of of West Africa right and the reason why they did that is because a lot of these high priests of the Levites were melanated people the Levites so when they got to Africa they settled in West Africa in a place called Judea now their old maps look at maps from 1741 going back when you look at the map of Africa, which is called Ethiopia at the time, that whole West African part is called the land of Judea. You can go and Google this. Yeah? And they were called the Wadea people of Judea. So they settled there in Judea. They were given this land by the Bantus, the native Africans. And they were said, you can live here amongst us. It's all good. But as it happens, the Jews, the Hebrew Israelites, they didn't quite want to integrate with the Africans. The Africans got a little bit jealous and said, well, you think you're better than us. You are snobs, you don't want to integrate. You don't want to be a part of who we are. The normal story right now when immigrants join a country, that's the normal thing even today, isn't it? Muslims, you come into a country, you need to integrate. You're in England, be like the English. This has been happening over and over for many, many years. So this is what happened. So, as a result, eventually, when the Muslims came down into Africa, hunting down, particularly the Hebrew Israelites, the priests, the last ones with supernatural abilities, who hadn't given up their supernatural powers, they made secret deals with the local Africans, the local Bantu chiefs, the Hamites and the Kushites. And said well if you sell us if you tell us if you sell out who amongst you are hiding who are the magicians hiding amongst you will give you gold all we want is these hebrew israelites they need to be sold back to the romans so the local african chiefs started hunting down all the Jews, all the priests, all the magicians, and selling them to the Muslims into slavery. So many of them were sold from West Africa, put on ships, sold to the Caribbean, sold to the Americas, sold to Europe, as what we now know as well, the Black Caribbeans, if you like. All the people of the Caribbean, what we know as the Negroes in the Americas and in Europe. 
and these are some of these Hebrew Israelites, priests. Or at least the lineage of them. And when they were sold into these places of captivity, eventually they couldn't keep it up anymore and they all converted to Christianity or Islam in whatever countries they were in. What's really prophetic for some of us is some of them, before they converted, left some codes. Yeah? Uh, and they left some of these codes in sometimes scriptures. King James. Sometimes in stories. And sometimes through things like cultures, customs, names. When they left Egypt, a lot of these original um, priests, there were two tribes of high priests. One tribe was called the Pinyas, and the other one was called the Kohans. And the Kohan was basically someone who could um, summon spirit. This is on Wikipedia. And the Pinyas were those who had great wisdom and intellect. These were the two bloodlines. They went to Europe. So in Europe, the Cohens made sure that they kept the tenants. They tried to keep it going as much as they could before they were infiltrated by the Khazars. And so did the Piñas. Piña, which eventually became? Piñero. Piñero. So even if you look up now, the Jews, most Jews have two surnames, particularly in the priestly sects. Cohen is the most popular one, everyone knows the Cohens. But the other one that a lot of people don't know is Piña or Piñero, or Piñas, or Pena. So that was the European side. But eventually, over time, they were infiltrated by what's known as the Khazarians, which I think was from the, one of the 12 tribes of Japheth, I think. They came in and they corrupted. They went in and corrupted all of this and basically, you know, hijacked all of it and made it their own and forced the original Jews into either slavery or into Christianity, into the Babylonian system. There's one small sect of people, one small group of Levites, the highest priests, right? So there's all these castes, even within the priestly, there are different castes, but the last, last caste was a small tribe who escaped being enslaved and escaped being converted and decided to leave West Africa and travel even further down south to see if they could hide. So they went down from West Africa, they traveled down, and the first place they landed was a place called Tanganyika, what's now called Tanzania. And this tribe, the chief of this tribe was called Mambiri. And Mambiri and his tribe went to Tanzania to start again. Tanganyika means to start again, start a new country. That's what Tanganyika or Tanzania means, new country. So they went there, they hid amongst the people there. The people there, the local tribes there welcomed them, integrated them, and they stayed there for quite a while. But after a while, Mambiri died and his predecessor decided we're becoming too comfortable here. We're starting to lose our ways. We need to go somewhere else where we can start again and really, really try and preserve as much as we can. So once again, they packed up and they went even further down south. And they landed in 
a place um, in Southern Africa or Southern Central Africa, what is now known as the region of Zimbabwe, Zambia, Malawi, that region. And when they got there, there were certain tribes, Kosa tribes, Zulu tribes, Bantu tribes basically that were living there. And this tribe of people were now called the Lemba or Bemba or Vemba or Kalanga. They got there, they settled, but they didn't integrate once again. They were a bit wary of people because they were used to being sold out. Everywhere they went, people would always try and sell them out for money because people around the world knew that if you find a Jew and you sell them to the Romans, it's good coinage, it's good money. So they were very wary people. They were always hiding. So when they got to Africa or Southern Africa, they were hiding in these caves. A lot of them, they settled in the caves um, and in the hills. And they took on two spirit animals as a result. One called the Morfu, which is a type of buffalo, if you like, a mountain buffalo. And the other one called the Soko, which is the monkey, the cave monkey. And they said, this is our spirit animal. And we're going to pass on our stories through songs and poems that are based on either the buffalo, Su, S-O-U-X, or the monkey. Monkey pox, anyone? <laughs> right? So these were the two holy totems. And these people, when they got there, they were welcomed by the Khorsas that were there, the Bantus. And the Bantus said, these people, these foreigners that have come here, are always hiding. Always hiding in the caves. Always hiding in the mountains. They are the Machona. And Machona in Bantu means those who hide. Machona became Mashona, which became the Shona people. Of Zimbabwe. Now these Machona, because they were in the caves, in the mountains, they kept their spiritual practices alive. The Sangomas, the Mondoros, the Ngangas, they were in touch with the supernatural out in the mountains. A place called Nyanga, where the Ngangas were in Zimbabwe. A place called Njerere in Matopos. Yeah, these are very spiritual places in Zimbabwe. A place in Mashingo called Great Zimbabwe, where they built this great kingdom. And they settled there. And over time, obviously, they had to intermarry and they had to integrate and they slowly began to water themselves down and lose their memories really slowly. So the Mashona, the Vemba, the Lemba, the Karanga, the Bemba, the Machona, the Shona, the Tanganyikas, who were the Judeans, who were the Levites, the tribe of Levi. That last lineage died out, last place it died out was the place of stone, Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe means house of stone, Zimbad Zimbabwe, house of stone. The reason why it was called house of stone or Zimbad Zimbabwe is because that's where the holy tenets that were written by Moses on the stone tablet, that is the last place they landed. And they are there to this day. There's actually a museum where the Ark of the Covenant is said to be. There's a big Ark of the Covenant, a museum in Zimbabwe, that has got this ancient artifact. And people say no one's opened it, no one's allowed to open it. It's a very spiritual thing. It's not allowed to be opened. This is what the message is. This is what's been said. This is what we need to do. What's come to me in the last week is 
some prophetic things in the Bible. The Bible says in the last days, in the days of Armageddon, in the last days of judgment, just before Christ returns, one thing must happen first. All the tribes of Israel must gather together. First, the tribes of Israel, the 144, must come together first. And only when they come together and they've set themselves free, only then will Christ return. And only then will the promised land be given to the children of Israel. Basically, rapture means to remove, to separate. Very harshly. It's a very harsh separation. And the rapture is happening right now. We've all been harshly removed from our world, from our realities. We've all had to leave everything that we know to come out here and be raptured in the wilderness. This is the rapture. Right? So the rapture is happening as we speak. And once all those who are meant to be raptured, enough of them are raptured away from Babylon into the kingdom of God. What is God? God is supernatural. God is nature. The kingdom of God is what? Here, where we are in the wilderness. This is the kingdom of God. Once we have raptured ourselves and we're in the kingdom of God and we meet Jesus in the clouds, it says, you'll meet, you'll be raptured into the kingdom of heaven and you'll meet Jesus in the cloud. There are three deities in spiritual wisdom and ancestry. There's Mother Earth. There is Father Water. And there's the Holy Spirit. The air, the clouds. You will meet Christ in the clouds. So through the breath, teaching, the breath, listening to people speak, activating, breath work that you do within your own self, breathing this good as prana out in supernatural this these are the clouds as spoken of in the bible meeting christ in the clouds who is jesus jesui jesus is you i am what i am we are all jesus so when you rapture when you're raptured from babylon and you go to the kingdom of heaven nature supernature kingdom of god you will meet Jesus or Christ in the clouds. Clouds is also the higher mind, the pineal. You'll meet Jesus in the higher mind, the breath, the wisdom, where you will be saved and have eternal life. Where you will not go through the pre-tribulation that is prophesied about, which is about to begin soon. So I believe the pre-tribulation which I think we're kind of in already or really began this year was it last year maybe 21, 22, 22, 23, 24 so I think it's going to happen it's starting on the 15th of June or on the 24th of June which are 666 yeah, June is the 6th month 15 is 6, 2022 is 6 June 6, 24, 6, 2022, 6. On the 24th of June, there is a great conjunction of seven planets, which has never happened before. Again, it's prophesied in the Bible. It's even bigger than the one that happened in 2020. So there are a lot of Christians saying the rapture or Jesus is coming on the 24th of June, or the event is coming on the 24th of June, for those of you following these threads. I believe this is when the Great Tribulation begins. Starting with pestilence, the white horse, disease, wars, famine. Right? You can read the Bible. The Bible tells you exactly what's going to come. And it's already begun. Monkeypox. Jay pointed out the Queen Jubilee. She um, 
appeared the other day. Two white horses. What do the white horses mean? Pestilence. Disease. The ritual. So really from the 24th of June, 15th to 24th, it's going to get crazy up until mid-2024. This is the first three and a half years. Again, in the Bible, it says after three and a half years, the Antichrist will be revealed to the world. We've also been told about aliens recently, right? They're now disclosing aliens. The latest one, just yesterday, they announced they took the eyes of a dead person and brought them back to life. Just yesterday. Scientists, for the first time, a man died, they took his eye sockets out, they did some scientific stuff, and these eyes were moving on their own, alive. Right? So, so many of these things are starting to really take shape and come into effect now. It's really important for us to really start to be conscious and aware. How serious what is happening really, really, really is. And the burden of responsibility that we all have here. The amount of energy we are holding on behalf of the rest of the world. And we do not want to make the same mistakes we made in the wilderness after we left Babylon with Moses and we end up being in the wilderness for 40 years. We're not going to do that. I refuse for that to happen again. I'm not about that life. Not this time. Today we have some lovely pine birds. Okay. Nice, nice. So what, what's going on with this? Uh, we have some nice uh, spelled flower, uh, sun, sunflower seeds in there, and some vegetables. And this food is uh, preparing some steam uh, vegetables to accommodate it. So this is pickled vegetables, uh, tomato paste, tomatoes, and lovely mustard sauce. Thanks. Okay. Hey. Should I get But the first bowl, it gives the most richest color. Yeah. Uh, and from then it gets less and less. Yeah. Uh, so usually you have to boil it longer and longer. Mm -hmm. So the first boil maybe two hours, mm -hmm. the third boil three, four hours, mm -hmm. and the third boil the same. Mm -hmm. uh, but you really have to go out of the color. Yeah. So you just, you shouldn't boil it until the color is, is right. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. uh, yeah, so usually how I do it is I take about this amount for a big, big one. The big, big, big one. Big, big one. Uh, and then I boil it there. So first bring it to a boil mm -hmm. and then just simmer yeah. for hours. Mm -hmm. 
Great. Uh, and then you save it on a plate. Mm -hmm. Let it dry. Yes. Have a nice meeting. And then you can. Mm. So when you're gonna boil again, yeah. you take a new batch. Yeah. And then. Yeah. The third time you take the already boiled ones. And put them together. Yes. Yes. So first time fresh. Yes. Second time also fresh as well. Yes. With that or not? No. Not. Yes. 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 So yes. two fresh, two one fresh batch, another fresh batch, third one together. Yes. Yes. Okay. So you can boil it twice. Uh, not three times or three times. Where's the third time? I'm trying to do the math. I'm just doing it intuitively. Intuitively. How was the kitchen today, Fry? Good. Yes? What was the best part? Probably baked Making the pumice, yeah? Nice. Two different flavours. Yep. Nice. What's in one of them? Yeah? Um, um, paprika. Nice. Okay. Which one's your favourite, Adam? This one, I think. Nice. The paprika. Amazing. Give thanks. And you're doing flutings? Raw. Raw. Yes. Nice. Very good. How long for? Very hydrating. Mm, I've been mostly for like three or four days, and I'm probably doing for the rest of the week. Nice, nice. Melons. Watermelons. Yes. The fourth day, feeling kind of weak though, so I'm probably going to eat some salad. Mm. <laughs> and great. after that, I'm going raw. Yes. For how long? For at least a week. That's yes. great. It's great, isn't it? So, so. What a lovely sandwich. Doing <laughs> <laughs> a sandwich. So uh, creative. Yeah. He's even cutting it up. It's great. It's so balanced. Wow, that's the perfect bite. Thanks. <laughs> I just despise the pen on me. <laughs> it's all in my mind. 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 <laughs> In pineal you will be what it is you wish to see Also change from me to we and you'll be very happy And that's the one sir Don't come try to blame me Cause you're not seeing in my way I mean what I say Said I mean what I say I mean what I say Said I mean what I say. Oh man. So what do you think of the song? <laughs> I think it's amazing. It's just really it's really funny to hear it's great. myself like doing things that I actually do in my head all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah.
Okay, that's fine. Okay. Oh, he's taking a video still. Oh. Okay. Scoochies. Scoochies. Oh, oh, he goes by name. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Don't forget to smile. Smile. How's your air? Oh my god, John. What is it? He's always asking. How's your air? It's so funny. Yes. Keeps it nice and together. Beautiful. Oh, one, one with the, with, with the sisters. So the nice. Sisters <laughs> aligning <laughs> <cycles>. <laughs> mm. <sighs> Relicious. Brilliant. You're amazing. Glorious. <laughs> How long did it take? lighter there's no malice on the land it's a beautiful experience give thanks to be able to witness this with such amazing people here so much thanks where are you going for it where what do you mean out don't just don't come with them teenage vibes with me bruv what do you mean shops what were you getting from the shops bruv what shops are you getting what fruits are you getting sorry Mangoes, apples, oranges. Hey. Flour, pumpkin, and sweet potato and beetroot with broccoli and cauliflower roasted. Yep. Then we have a raw salad. Mum is just giving away right now. Oh, let's have a look at the raw salad. Ooh. Ooh. Big meal. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Give thanks. Give thanks. Called the year of the fig when Jesus was crucified. The Bible tells you how to work it out. So they've worked it out and they're saying basically based on those things, this year is like one of the trigger. Last year was a trigger year. And in 2024 or 2025, mm -hmm. this is the midway point. Oh, and then 2029 is when Christ should be returning. Mm. And then 2030, this is when the whole thing. 
the option if I need to like what's going on as you pose it in its description. And again, if you had the Bible, flipped it through, there, I'll read this one, and then that, that line. It's the only one, I've not, I don't know any other mm. verses or yeah. anything, so that was helpful, I've got that a few times. I think, I think what's really mind-boggling for me, because I'm, I'm listening to a lot of preachers at the moment, Christian preachers, and most of them are convinced Jesus is coming this month or this year at the very least. Yeah. So convinced. Yeah. Nearly every every preacher I'm, I'm, I'm watching. So some are based on intuitive feelings, some are based on wisdom things out in the Bible, mm. uh, based on events that are happening. But it's very, very concise. But what I'm really glitching on is like this verse in the Bible, there's a few verses in the Bible that tell you clearly that when these things happen yep. and you're at this stage, do this or else this will happen. And it clearly says in the times of tribulation, when you see wars happening, when you see famine is coming, when you see diseases, when you see nations fighting against each other, families being broken apart, leave Babylon, go into the wilderness. Leave Babylon and go into the wilderness. So I'm seeing these preachers reading it whilst they sat in their houses in the matrix. <laughs> <laughs> and he keeps I'm just talking. like, and they're saying, oh, else you're going to be, you know, you're going to be in the years of tribulation. You're going to be, some of you will die. We were going to die. I'm like, but how can you be reading this set in your house? The seasons, like we're in Pisces now. And like we're saying last week, Pisces is all about escape. It's all about spiritual. It's all about going deep within. But you see with a lot of people who are realizing what's happening, even in the Matrix, whether you're Christian, Muslim, whatever, everyone can see that things are coming to a head. Something's about to happen. But I think a lot of people are just in, in an acceptance of waiting for... Um, a savior or for something to save them yeah, just, yeah we're all gonna die we're all gonna starve this is what they're gonna do to us um, but it's okay because the universe will look after us or Christ will come and save us Sit, Milo. Sit. Make myself look good. Listen. Good. Oh, you have your hair loose and everything. Oof.
going to ask Mandela today how she um, sees her journey to Pineal. And my first question is, um, what were you doing before you came here? And what made you switch um, from living in the matrix to living in nature? Uh, so before I um, was working as a receptionist uh, at a big spa, Eliza Wellness, it's in Belgium. Um, but uh, there have been a few lockdowns, so I was uh, having a lot of time at home. Um, and the reason why I started uh, looking to live somewhere else than in Holland was basically because I, uh, uh, my the rent contract of the home I was living in um, was coming to an end and I had to leave my house. And then I just started dreaming like, uh, what if I leave Holland? Uh, what are the options? What would I really want to do? And then I came up with the idea to living in a community and around the same time I uh, saw a message on Facebook uh, from Raji who has been here like a year ago, no, maybe, maybe longer. Um, I really felt it was divinely guided so I don't even know why I have him on my Facebook. But he shared something and I replied with, with um, asking what are you talking about? I, I think I'm interested, can you still tell me something more? And then the next day he called me um, and he asked me, are you ready to leave the matrix? And my answer was, well, yes and no. And then he asked me, what's, what's the no? And I told him, yeah, I'm not ready to leave my, uh, my futures behind, uh, who were at the time uh, 18 and 19. Um, and I just, yeah, just, just talk to your futures. And I'm like, yeah, of course. Um, so after that phone call, I spoke with, uh, with Funkel behind the camera, my son. And his first reaction was, uh, oh yeah, nice, I'm coming with you. And my daughter, um, her answer was like, nah, I don't see myself doing that, but you do what makes you happy. So I'm, I will live with that. And uh, yeah, mom, follow your path, do what makes you happy. Um, so the thing which made me say yes and no, the no just was gone. So it became a yes. And it was really an intuitive decision. Um, and I sometimes have that in my life that I just know I have to do this. I don't know the reason, I don't know why, but it just, it just everything feels like, yes, I resonate, I need to do this. Um, and that was probably around March or maybe April last year. And then from that point on, it went really fast. Uh, I decided to go, uh, started to sell all my stuff, um, furniture, whatever, the car. Um, and a few months later, I came here, beginning of August last year, with, uh, with my son. Um, maybe it was nice to know my daughter didn't come, but she visited like, when we were two months here, she visited for a week. And after that, she felt like, hmm, I think I'll be coming back. And um, she's now living with us for two and a half months, kind of. So that's really nice. How was your um, detaching process? Hmm. So I always uh, figured myself that I'm really uh, good in letting go and detaching. Um, but yeah, it was sometimes a bit harder than I thought. Um, so it started with, with um, letting go of my job, which I have done often in my life. It's normally not a problem. Um, like detached from colleagues and stuff. I kind of, um, I don't miss people much. I think that's the good way to say it. 
because I'm often in the moment and where I'm at, there I'm at and there's always people I connect with so I don't miss people uh, quickly. Detaching from the stuff was uh, uh, a nice process because in the beginning I found myself like holding on to certain stuff like for example uh, the really long table I had which is stupid but I was like <laughs> I'm not gonna get rid of the table. Everything else can go, but this table. And then, like a week later, I found myself. Ah, oh, you know what? The table can go as well. So that was uh, a process which went on and off. Like in the beginning, holding on to some some things, and then in the end, like I oh, you know what? That can go as well. Because I came here with um with a car with with some room to bring stuff. But yeah. That's it, so I really had to leave uh, with as little as possible. Um, um, so detaching of the stuff eventually went really well. Uh, I even gave things away because I thought like, yeah, whatever, give it away. Um, and detaching from my, my closest friends and family uh that's that's a that's a bigger step um it also goes on and off a bit so there are moments where i, I feel i'm detached and i'm okay with it, even if, if i won't see them again and then there's another part of me who still so still holds on a bit uh, so i guess that's still a progress Whilst being here, I, I don't really miss my family or friends. But sometimes I have a phone call or um, connect with them. Um, I think the biggest detachment is uh, detaching from my parents. Because I know they, um, yeah, they, they miss me. And um, yeah, I just want them to be okay. So, uh, some more detachment yes. okay what was your um let's see biggest lesson in the journey mm. yeah like letting go of the old to make room for the new moment and have full trust uh, in how my path will unfold, have full trust in the universe that whatever comes my way, it's meant to be. Okay. Yeah. okay. What were the less nice experiences in those times of coming here? Before coming here, leaving and coming here. personal question which also uh, concerns Funkel. Yes. Is, uh, um, so at the time um, I was really busy with uh, doing my job, um, emptying the house, selling all the stuff. Um, so yeah I was really busy and uh, my son was uh, in another process at the time and somehow we we were busy with our own stuff and i expected from him to help um, moving stuff and he expected me to listen to him but yeah we couldn't find each other at that moment um whilst before and, and after we really connect uh very well i'd say so and because of a lot of stuff was going on at the time um yeah, Funko was experiencing uh, with some um, plant medicine and uh, exploring some drugs. And from my perspe perspective, that went a bit uh, the wrong way. Um, so we, yeah, we had quite some, some heavy process together. And by the time we 
were driving here. Um, Funko still wasn't in his, uh, I would say, natural state of mind. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and for, uh, for a mother to see your son in a certain way um, doing not well, why, why Funko uh, might have another opinion on that. But from my perspective, I, I saw my son not doing great. And uh, that's always the hardest thing of being a, a mother, I guess. You always want your children to be happy, your creatures to be happy. Um, so yeah, that was a hard time uh, in, in, in that period. Okay. Mm. What did you learn from uh, those experiences? Mm -hmm. Stay equanimous and keep trusting. <laughs> keep trusting and, and do whatever you can. Um, Having yeah. more trust in the universe. Keep going. Just keep going. <laughs> mm. Having more trust in the universe, right? Yeah, but also having trust uh, in the process of, in this case, my son. Um, I think as a parent, it's, it's feed, finding the balance where uh, you protect him or you let go because they need to have their own experience. And that's, that's really finding the balance in that, um, where you allow your futures to make their own mistakes or where you uh, see like it's going wrong and I have to step in as a, as a protector. Uh, finding that balance, that's, uh, that's a big learning. Yeah. How was arriving here? Mm. I cried for two weeks. <laughs> so because we uh, have been through um, a lot before we came and even the, the trip down here was a trip of, I don't know, 24 hours or so. Um, yeah, it was, a, uh, it was a hard trip. So when I came here, I think I just had this, this huge release of all the stress I, I've been through. Um, and because the frequency on the land, it's, it's really higher, it's different. So the moment you get here, you're just being confronted with, with what's going on inside. So yeah, I was very emotional arriving here. And I, I was really glad that there were people here who told me, just, just cry. I had the same thing. So I felt like, okay, I'm not, not going crazy. I'm not the only one who's just crying whilst arriving. Um, so yeah, that was the arrival. With the knowledge you have now, what advice would you give yourself before leaving, before starting this process? Relax, take it easy, relax, one step at a time. Okay. Chill, <laughs> don't stress. Just relax. I think that's a nice one to round it off with. Mm, great. Thank you for your thanks. story. Yes. Thanks. Okay, thanks. This, this guy, bro. This guy. He's making more pizzas. Tell me, tell me, <laughs> tell me, tell me. What's going on here? Oh my goodness. So. We all got inspired by when Ja and Luce were making like these, you know, what we call Cheeto dust. And then Ja was saying, you know, we can actually make these exactly, you know, chips, the base form. So then one time I'm like, I didn't want to, you know, make them into individual Cheetos or what we call Panitos. And then so I just did it as a, like a flatbread. And then I'm like, hmm, and Luce was like, ah, you're making a pizza? I'm like, nah, I'm not making a pizza. But I'm like, wait a minute actually make a pizza now and then you know it just went off from there actually 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 the first time i made a pizza was when jay made this salad and i used that as like a dressing and a chili sauce and then boom as jay could tell you what his experience from that was but really amazing you know we're leveling up each and every moment and now we have raw pizza beautiful and what have you made the sauce from the base uh brazil nuts lemon juice a little olive oil uh, egg salt, black pepper, 
stabbing it. Open it up. Amazing. Yes. Amazing. Give thanks. Give thanks for that. Give thanks. What are we topping this with, bro? Some basil. We deserve pumpkin seeds. Some scallions. Uh, did a little olive oil on them. Black salt mm. and pepper. Just shook it up. Nice. A little taste. You know? Still raw. Still savory. Still great. Hey, yes, it's done. Mm. Oh my god, everything's done. Yes. Please get me one as well whilst you're at it. Give it out. Naya, what are we doing? I am mulching. Mulching? Yes. Mulching, yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. Is that what it's called? Mulching. Wow. What are we mulching, yeah? So it's mulching or ground cover. And uh, what it does, it protects the roots from being burnt by the sun. Because right now it's like 35 degrees or something. So um, it protects the roots. Uh, when you water, it retains water, keeps it nice and cool. And uh, eventually it will go into the soil and make the soil better as well. Right. Good thanks. Good thanks. <laughs> Out the way, people. Here you go. Around them, probably. Oh, I need to get a good picture. Wow. What did you make? What's going on here? What? This is looking really good. Made it inside of cabbage. Nice. And some, and some vegetables. Mix with the millet. And uh, what was the process? What did you do first? How did you make this happen? So we soaked the millet, boiled it, then seasoned it with smoked paprika and cumin and a few other spices. Then we make the millet, into, then we grab these Romanesca broccoli leaves and then we put the millet inside so it's kind of like dharma except with Romanesca broccoli leaves instead of grape leaves. Wow, amazing. How long did it take? Mm, a few hours, <laughs> two or three. Oh, so good. Three maybe. Yeah? Three hours maybe. And and did you, you did you enjoy it? Yes. 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 It looks um, like you enjoyed it. And instead of cutting the leaves raw, we um yeah we steamed the leaves. We steamed the leaves. So they have flexibility. Wow. They don't just crumble. Amazing. Did you eat? Mm -hmm. so oh. What are your thoughts? Because I'm just, I haven't even started yet. Ooh, should wait now. <laughs> <laughs> Say no more. <laughs> yes, give thanks, guys. Really, it just gets better and better. You guys are just, wow. Oh, look at that. Wow. You come out here raw fast. Really? Wow. That's how you know it's good food, man. Give thanks. Well done. Everyone said, no, I'm not eating. And then, <laughs> we, all, and then we all got our food. And then we were kind of looking like... <laughs> what did you think of the dinner? It was phenomenal. Like millet and cabbage. New, new dimensions we're reaching here. Wow. Yeah. Wow. What did you think?
What did you think of the dinner? Amazing. Best salad I have in a long time. Wow. Yes. Wow, they really did it. They really did it, huh? We're so grateful 
So grateful for 